It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them, Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationship with the uh, University of Miami. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> um, she was smart. So now, here he is. The Great One, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. LT, I'm amazed you showed up this week, my man. I'm amazed you showed up. Um, I saw you leaving the stadium the other day. I know how rough it was for you. I know how rough it was for Canes fans. But we welcome everybody. It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show. And uh, Lamar coming live from Canes wear. And uh, he's not wearing the same shirt he wore last week. Uh, I'll tell you that. Um, That was a beautiful shirt, too. I don't think you'll ever see Lamar wearing that one again. Oh, man, I love that shirt. Uh, That was... was, uh... Man, what a what an incredible shirt! I wish I could say the more. I, I wish I could say the same thing about the game. Okay, how about that? Yeah, Jesus, I mean. Louise, man. So I'm I'm sporting the XFL hat today, so I can <laughs> maybe get a get in a good mood and think about my my new job. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, forty five thirty one, Middle Tennessee comes into Hard Rock mm-hmm. and upsets the Miami Hurricanes, and Lamar. I know, you know, we both obviously total, are total believers in what's going on down there. Um, or at least I know I, I, I still am. Um, and, you know, I feel that this program is going to get turned around. Uh, I didn't think we would ever see what we saw Saturday ever again, quite honestly. Uh, we saw it against FIU a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I felt with this coaching staff in place, uh, the way that I see the program trending, I didn't think there would ever be a day like that again. And then Saturday, there it was, LT. And, uh, you know, I think we got to start out tonight talking a little bit about it, you know, why it happened, how it happened, um, you know, how things like that happen in sports. Right. Um, you know, you've been on, the, on both sides of all different kinds of football games mm-hmm. throughout your career. Um, how does a team like like Middle Tennessee State come into the Miami Hurricanes home stadium mm-hmm. and honestly dominate the football game on both sides of the ball? Well, I, I can tell you this. Um, you know, it, you can come in, you can get off that bus um, like those guys probably did. 
thinking that um, this was going to be a, a easy game. Um, obviously, they had not watched any other football around the country, and they didn't realize that this team circled them just like they circled Texas A&M. You know, it circled this game, um, and they came out and they, they game planned. Um, they did everything possible, and they just physically, mentally, every part of the game beat them down. And they were, they were more. I wouldn't say more prepared. They just had everything going for themselves. You know, after when you come up, you go out in pregame warmups and you do whatever you do, and you're you're excited. The excitement kind of goes away when you're down fourteen nothing. That's hard. I mean, your first two plays, interception, touchdown, all that other stuff that's happening. Uh, whatever, and and if you don't have a team with strong leadership, uh, which obviously they don't, I'm just saying, they don't. Um, you can't win. I mean, you you can try, but you can't win. And and you know, I, I can remember us being down four uh, seven to nothing on the Vanover kickoff return. I know it's a little different, but I just remember going up and down that sideline, going, "Okay, we tied up now." We might be down. We were already up seven because we were playing at home. Now we're tied up. Let's go out and win the ball game. That's the way I looked at it. I just went up and down the sideline. We're tied up now, baby. Let's go. Let's go. You know, um, but that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one to come out and be down like that to a team like that. And as more and more and more you start having three and outs or continue to turn the ball over, that other team is getting more confidence. They, they, they're not thinking you're the giant anymore. They're not thinking this is the Miami of the old. They're not thinking that you're the first round quarterback or the first round tight end or, you know, the, the all ACC performer. They're thinking we can beat this team. And I think it just got a little too late in the game. Obviously, your quarterback is not uh, playing well. That's TVD. He's not playing well. Um, you know, maybe this offense is a little different for him as we he's not maybe he's not picking it up right but he's not playing well. And um, I need to slap the hell out of that guy that, 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 that guy that makes all these predictions um, uh, on the draft. No, Kuiper. Kuiper, I would slap the hell out. If he comes down here, everybody just slap him, just slap him. <laughs> Talking about this kid's a first rounder. He's not, he's not, not in this offense. And you know, as uh, I mean, I know this, when you go to the league, um, you have to run their offense. They're going to draft you to run their offense, uh, unless you're Lamar Jackson and you, they change the whole thing to suit you. Uh, you got to be able to pick yeah, stuff you up. You can't just be able yeah. to play in one offense. Yeah, yeah you can't be absurd, able to play in right? one offense. I mean, hell, you know, if it's if this continues, maybe it needs to transfer to to SMU. But I, I'm I'm really hoping the guy um, takes his time and and, and gets it together. Um, but what we saw last year was entirely different than this year. He is off. Is completely off, and then it could be uh, maybe he just doesn't have the confidence in the receivers, or the the running backs, or the tight ends. He might not have the confidence because they're they're missing. He's throwing the ball in the ground high. There's a lot of things that are going on on the offensive side of football. Maybe he's um maybe he was a little worried about the old line. I don't know, but there's something off. How about all um, of the above? Uh, uh, you know, there's something going on there, um, and the spark was needed. I kept saying during. I was in the box at this point. I think I went to a couple boxes, by the way. I boxed around, hopped around. Uh, I think I was – this time I was in um, with Rudy. Yeah, Rudy. You know, Rudy, the guy that says he started the whole thing, the, the whole, you know, get Mario down here. I was with him, and I was like, hey, man, he needs to make a switch right now. Why? Because they need a spark. They need a spark. This is going nowhere. Put that other guy in for a series or two. Give your team a spark. I don't care if he's supposed to be a first rounder. Hell, we 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 have done it to Gino. Gino, get your behind out there, man. Come on, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Would you really? Yeah, man. Come on, bro. We got we need to spark. Well, obviously, we ain't have nobody behind him. Forte or, or, or no, Forte was gone. I don't even know who the backup quarterback was. I I didn't mess with him too much. Um, but we if you need a spark, you got to make a change somehow, some way. And that was like midway through the first, or maybe it was like beginning of the second. Second. I just man. thought that I thought that. If we come out the since they didn't do it the first half, you come out the second quarter, you don't make the switch at halftime. You let the guy have a series. It's too late by this time. And now those guys got to go in there with Rick Stock still 
old country talking, getting his behind kicked at Florida State behind. Uh, he, he got them all pumped up and all amped up. And, I mean, it's it's too late now. It's too late. It's too late. Well, I want to talk more about the quarterbacks. I want to talk more about Rick Stockstill, too. Um, but, I mean, I felt a lot of people are blaming Josh Gaddis. A lot of yeah. people are, bl- are blaming Tyler mm-hmm. Van Dyke. I felt what I was watching, LT, was just a total – totally exhausted mentally and physically mm-hmm. organization. Mm. Um, and I, I felt like it was just breaking down. It was springing leaks everywhere you looked. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they obviously, you know, didn't have the greatest game plan in the world. Um, I thought some of their use of personnel could definitely have been better. Mm-hmm. Um you know, the, the scouting, the advanced scouting, I thought broke down. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they didn't realize how fast those receivers are. Yeah, yeah. Well, because- I, I can tell you this, Gary. I don't mean to cut you off. I, I, I asked T-Buck, um, I said, hey, man, if you're out there and you, as a receiver, I'm going to test you all game long just to see on run play to see if this guy really can run. You played against this guy for three quarters. You know he can run. And they might call press, but at the snap of the ball, you're getting the hell out of there because you like – and if they ask you, what the why why'd you why'd you get out of there with press bail or you backed up like cover three? Because that guy can run, coach. There's no way he should have been pressed up on that guy because that guy was fast, man. He still had 40 or 50 more yards to go once he hit the goal line. He, he might have been a 200-meter runner, let me tell you. Um, so 84 and a half yards per catch he averaged in the game. Jeez, Lamar. He had two catches for 169 yards, both of them obviously were bonds, bombs. 84.5 yards a catch. I don't think the great Lamar Thomas ever did that. I think I had those kind of stats at P- PCR back in the game field rec league when I was playing against <laughs> BFI. And I think I had about three catches for about 200 or something, or maybe 300. I don't can't remember, but that that just means that you're better than you're faster and you're better than the rest of them. And you know what? Hey, if you scouted these guys, you should know that that hey, maybe we press this side and maybe we back off this side a little bit. Maybe bring the safety over to kind of goad them to run a slant so we can pop him. But we can't go press all across the board and be stubborn. And say we're better than them when you watched on film, and those guys have probably come to the side and say, Man, that dude is fast. Well, they evaluated Miami's corners and they came to the conclusion that Miami's corners were not that fast, mm. and that was their game plan. They were going to do what they did, um, and they knew that Miami would come up and press them, you know, they knew Miami would man up on them. And it was automatic. You know, as soon as that happened, they were going deep and it worked every single time they hit three long passes, got 21 free points on top of the 10 points that the offense gave them with those two wow. interceptions to yes. start the game. They spotted this team, Lamar, 31 points in this game. So, yeah, but you know, I just felt like I was watching an exhausted mentally and physically exhausted organization from the players to the coaches, to the support staff, uh, you know, those coaches and that support staff, have been, they've been going hard for nine months. Right. Okay. And hard is one thing. Hard when you're working with Mario mm-hmm. is a whole nother deal. And they go to College Station and they lost. Right. And they get back at five in the morning. Mm-hmm. And now they're playing Middle Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And I think human nature kicked in. Mm-hmm. We got the week off. Well, I get. I tell you, I tell you, the, those guys on the other side were saying, "Hey, man, that's why you're getting the big bucks. You're getting five hundred dollars a watt, five hundred thousand to coach a position, and we're going. We're only paying. We're only getting seventy thousand. We're going to get the get best game plan because I've been on the other side. I've been at the Western Kentucky's playing against the University of Kentucky, seeing the receiver coach over there making three hundred thousand. I was making seventy thousand. So it was personal that we mm-hmm. won the game." You know, it was perfect. Great point. Great point. So, um, for for those guys on the other side, you know, you took it light, and they're laughing all the way now because they they probably get a raise off just that game. You know, <laughs> hell, they might even get ten thousand dollars bonuses. Plus, 
the 1.5 million that they got. Let's not talk about that. The 1.5 million that the school got. That hell, they they didn't even get Bethune Cookman that, and Bethune had more fans come to the game than Middle Tennessee's fans, and they had a good fan. They only got four hundred thousand. Where's the disparity there? And the, that I mean, hell, and, and Bethune lost about eight players for the year. So, I mean, it, 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 it's I'm just very frustrated right now, and you know what? Those guys that are making that money, there's a reason they're making that money. You you're there. You going you 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 know Mario is getting it out of me, and you know you gotta you gotta figure out a way to turn this around. You gotta figure out a way, and you know thank God that, that they have an off week this week, and um, you know like Gus Dad said, you know there's no better motivator than fear. Yeah, you know you you bench guys. You 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 tell the quarterback, hey, you're in the competition now, buddy. I know you're in the first. I know you got driving around the Bentley and getting five hundred thousand and all that other stuff, but you're in the competition, bro. And if you don't win, you can continue to ride in your Bentley. But we got to win games, man. We can't go out here and play like this because it's yeah. embarrassing. And on top of that, you can't go out there and say, I like to play on the road more than I like to play at home. Come on, man. Because let me tell you, how much more pressure did that put on him? I mean, making that, make, being quoted saying that. I mean, man, he was not thinking. Not no, he. But, he obviously don't know that this is South Florida. There are certain yeah, so, things you just you just kind of live with, you know. And you know, for me personally, uh, I was telling somebody today, it didn't matter who was. If we were thirty thousand, twenty thousand, we were coming out. We were going to play ball, and we was going to try to win. We were going to try to do everything possible, get stats, all these things that were motivators for us, also to get you back to the game. If we won, we knew you were coming back. See, that's what I like. We always said, hey, you might not came to this game because we lost the game. I mean, the few games we lost, we lost the BYU game, and then we come and I think we played like somebody sorry. Or nobody came, but that's okay because you came back when we started kicking butt. And that's what you have to look at. This is just how it is down here, man. You got to you gotta understand that. That if you're not a true winner, why are we going to waste our time and come watch you? Yeah. Just, that's, that's what I learned. I mean, this ain't Gainesville. This ain't Lexington, Kentucky. This ain't Louisville, Kentucky, where everybody buys tickets and they show up. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I might have bought the ticket down here, but hell, I'm going to sell that. Or I'm going to give it away. But I ain't going because I got to pay for parking and you ain't winning. You out there putting a bad product on the field. Y'all ain't showing up. You're throwing an interception right off the rip. You're letting a dude run a 200-yard dash out there on you. No. So you got to live with it, man. You got to, you know, hopefully these are lessons that I know Mario knows. And he's probably trying to um, tell his staff so and, and tell his players. Uh, there's just certain things down here that, that are to be expected. And for that young man to say that, uh, obviously he, no one had told him not to say that. So and that's, that's kind of on him. So now he has to deal with that yeah. being down here and uh, hopefully they don't scratch his car up. Yeah, it's just got, already got a nice continuation car. of what's been a rough year so far for Tyler Van Dyke. And yeah, uh, yeah so LT, so I mean, I don't know if I'm right, I, it, it, but I felt I was just seeing a totally worn out organization, top to bottom, kind of implode last week. And, yeah. you know, now they got to rally the troops. They're back to square one and, yeah. and get it back together. Let me bring in um, our voice of the fan, Bruce Warner, to join, the party, to join the party here. And, um, yeah, so I think it's I think it's back to square one. And uh, LT... You know, you've you've been at square one before at various points, and and um, how does a football team go back to square one after an experience like that? You get back to the basics, and you make the practice hard. You know, um, and you know it goes back again to what my man said about the fear. Unfortunately, today's kids, you bring the fear into it, they're going in the transfer portal. <laughs> You know, you can't you can't push them too hard. You can't you can't get in their face. You can't talk. You know, you can't talk talk about the mamas. You know, you got to be very you, know, you have to be very respectful to them and all that other good stuff. So, um, I mean, I got my 
my mama, I, if I told my mama the things that them coaches said about her, you know, she'd have fought them every time she came out. But, you know, it, it was just part of the game. You know, it was a part of the game. It was what we expected, you know. But, you know, I knew it wasn't personal. It was just the way they talk, but you can't you can't do these things to these kids. So hopefully he's he's making some some practices very hard, and he's talking to them, he's loving them up afterwards to let them know it's not personal. But the things have to change. You can't you can't do that. You can't do that type of performance and put that type of performance on the field. So so much talk about the offense. Let's let let let, let let's start there. Let's uh, give Tyler Van Dyke the benefit of the doubt for a moment. He can't play in Josh Gaddis's offense. Like, what? What the hell is that, LT? Like, a quarterback that is supposedly of the level to be a first-round draft pick in the NFL draft can't only be able to play in Rhett Lashley's simple, um, up-tempo spread offense and not be able to play in a different scheme where he's got to make reads and and mm-hmm. execute more complicated plays and things like that. So. I'm not buying that, okay? Um, if this guy is the talent that everybody believes he is, then he should be able to play in just about any offense. Am I crazy? Gary, I, I, here's my point on that. Shouldn't they have noticed that from spring and fall practice? That he no, can't- because it wasn't noticeable in practice. That's that's what I'm talking about. Like, like I think that's a bunch of b- b- baloney. Like, he, he looks fine in practice. Yeah. Executing those same plays. Well, like, maybe. Well, maybe we need to play Central Connecticut State again. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just you know, hey, again, you know this this young man who um, Kuiper has talked about and raved about, and and um, you know we get a new coordinator. Um, it's part of the game, man. You got to learn it. We had to learn. We had to go from Jimmy's to Dennis's. You know, to, for some people, it, it it fits. For some people, it didn't. Yeah, you went from it, like um, what Gary Stevens. Yes, yes, Gary Stevens, where I was down in the three point stands at a receiver. I couldn't do it. I my, I, my, I was not strong enough. Um, but when I stood up, I was stronger. You understand? So I don't know if you would have heard of Lamar Thomas in the three point stands. But I got Dennis Harrison who comes in. And I got to stand up and I got to look down on guys and I, you know, I felt I had confidence. So, you know, with this intimidation offense, factor with that too, you're bigger than these guys. Yeah. Well, you know? I was taller. I wasn't bigger. Tall. I was taller. Were, I, that's right. <laughs> we, we, we know the weight room stories. Do you think <laughs> that Mario, this is to either one of you, you think Mario sat down with Gaddis and said to him since last Saturday, we better fix this. I don't, this, you, you got to make some adjustments. They were playing us off the ball with like seven guys in the box yeah. The wings were open, the middle was open, and we're still throwing balls down the field. Right. Do you think he had a conversation with him, Lamar? You would know. I mean, I, I would think so. I mean, I think you're so you're 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 a hard you're a hard coach. You know, you you're you're a Jimmy Johnson type coach, you know. Yeah, I would think that he he has those hard conversations with with, with Gaddis. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't but I I don't it's a different offense, you know. It's a different. It's it's really different than last year, and I I knew that from just watching, you know, some you know, some of the uh the, this, when he got here, I knew it was a different offense. It wasn't as one read type of deal. This is an offense where you can go second and third read, but he he seems to me, and it's just my opinion. He has, he already knows who he's going to throw to, right you know, in, in his mind. Um, for example. Fourth and one, the longest play that ever in the University of Miami history. What we had it, the quarter ended, they walked all the way down, <laughs> timeout after timeout. And guess what? You call a play that no one told the tight end, hey, bro, you got to get in the end zone too. Because if he catches that freaking ball, it's not even a touchdown. Right. And then there's a guy that's standing right behind him, maybe three, four yards. Terrible spacing, by the way. That's wide open. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I see that I'm saying he already said, I'm throwing to this guy. This is my guy. I'm throwing to him. Now, I think, guess who else said that? Middle Tennessee State. 
we know who you're throwing to because that other mm-hmm. guy i think it was number eight or something he was standing back there waving his hands and stuff so i mean um you you got to be able to go with your reads man you got to be able to go with your reads in this offense it's not a it's not a mickey mouse i'm not not i, I want to make sure you guys understand i'm not uh judging um the last offense because it was successful with the with the with the weapons he had which i heard mario say it was 65 percent of his out uh output that left mm-hmm. and that was uh uh the little guy who broke the records and uh Harley. Rambo. Harley. 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 yeah so you know you guys know that 38 years ago when jimmy got here people mm. were saying the hell is jimmy johnson yeah what did he go eight and four or something like that mm-hmm. and people wanted to run that guy from arkansas who coasted oklahoma state out of town and then dennis comes in which you know and he goes to the one back and people are screaming one back mm-hmm. what the bullshit is this yeah who is this hit from washington state then when when butch gets here he can't coach he's a horrible game day coach well guess what johnson's one of the greatest coaches of all time Dennis got two titles, and Butch put probably the greatest team we've ever had on the field. So you don't know, but I know one thing: it took Butch a while. It took yeah. Dennis came into a loaded team, uh, and Jimmy had to fix what was over there. But I trust Mario's going to do the right thing, and maybe he made a mistake with this coach. I'm no coordinator. How the hell do I know? Yeah. But I do know when I'm watching a game and I see a guy looking at a receiver the whole time. There's a problem. Yeah. They still should be throwing to the backs in the flat. They're not doing it some quick passes, and we said this last week, get him a rhythm, get him a rhythm. Three-step drop, get rid of the ball. Three, Get rid of the ball. Those first two plays of the game, Bruce, were, were, were quick yeah, passes. Yeah, I mean, some guys were in the same spot. And there were back. rhythm. They, Bruce, there were rhythm. It was just the rhythmless nation. It was to the other sure. team. Okay. okay. <laughs> but they were quick passes. They were, they were quick passes. Quick interception. Hard to believe. Well, the one was tipped up in the air. That was just a lucky play, I guess, for that. Hey. All, right, all right. So, LT, just to yep. finish my initial thoughts. So, so right. is, is is there any legitimacy to this whole Tyler Van Dyke can't play in Josh Gaddis's system? What is Josh Gaddis's system? What are you seeing that makes it so the, the, the plays of Josh Gaddis's system so distinctly different? from the passing plays in Rhett Lashley's system, that this should even be a topic of conversation? Well, again, some of it goes to weapons. You know, he did have – the guy had some weapons last year. Um, yep. I'm not saying that these guys aren't weapons, but they're developing. Um, you know, I'll say they're not weapons. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I hate I, – I hate to have to – You're a receiver. You can't – but, but I'll be honest see, and see I'll these say guys. they are not weapons. They aren't. Well, you know they're they're 22s and they could be an AK-47, but they're 22s. Last year he had some AK-47s. Um, so, and then you know it's it's they didn't they don't really throw a lot of bubble screens like the other offense where you know you kind of get the ball in the receiver's hands as fast as possible because that's not his deal. Most of his stuff is run the ball and and get you to suck up. And when you suck up, we're gonna throw it over your head on the post or. You know some downfield stuff where you have to make the plays and one-on-one coverage, uh, some posts, some digs. There's a lot of good stuff in this offense, uh, but it, it, it revolves around the O line doing their job, which they've been pretty good. Um, but the, the other team had a plan for them. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it it depends on the running backs running the ball. Well, we've been okay with that. It's just now everybody's hurt. Um, and the tight ends catching the ball, we've been okay. I tell you, they st- they took a step back last week though. Um, that guy, I don't think that guy is a first rounder either. Well, I think he's, he's no. Well, Mallory is not. Yeah, a first I think rounder. he's. I think he's okay. You know, he's a little stiff. Yeah. Um, he's stiff. He's he's a little stiff, but he's a he's a good player. But you know, a lot of it just depends on. I mean, it, this is some old school. Big Ten type football that Josh Gaddish has going on, but you got to get those players in there. I mean, you 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 you're stuck with the players that you have when you get there. So you're trying to mold them into your offense. You know, unfortunately, you don't have a lot of time to change your offense to fit them. You know, the only I can I can go back to the Bobby Petrino, uh, the Lamar Jackson story. Bobby Petrino, as stubborn as he is and as bright as he is and everything else, he said to hell with this. I have to cater my offense to this young man. 
I have an offense, but let me see if I can let him do what he's comfortable Lamar doing. Lamar Jackson is a different yes. quarterback. Yes, yeah. he, he is. He is. I'm going to let him do what he does best, and I'm going to teach him my offense. Now, Josh, you know, Tyler got the ball, got rid of the ball fast last year. Um, he's holding it this year. He's holding it. Um, I, I don't think he's sure of his reads. Maybe I'm wrong. It looks that uh, way. And and then he gets stuck sometimes on that one guy. And if it's not open, he's I mean, he's tried to force it. He's seen that it's, his arm is not as strong as he might think. And those other teams are also scamming, scheming it up, too, where they're saying, we're going to take your tight end away from you. OK, we're going to let you be one. on. We're going to let you guys be one on one on the outside. And you guys are going to have to make plays. Well, all I know, Lamar, is if he's the offensive coordinator, and you tell a thousand people that they're at the line, jamming the line of scrimmage, they're coming after the quarterback. Wouldn't most of us call a screen? Where was the screens? That slows down that pass rush until until they stop the screen. I'm still throwing it. Just like I think I mentioned this a week or two ago, we played App State four or five years ago, and they were stacking that box. And every time Kaya got the snap, he threw it to the right, he threw it to the left, and those guys were running up the field, and they, they got those linebackers out of that box. And that's what they didn't do against this team. They have schemed us. They have coached yep. They have yep. schemed us. Well, but it's not that, you know, a kid like this, he's going to get his ass kicked. But get rid of the ball. Throw a screen. Slow down the pass rush. Then play action would work. But he didn't do it. Yeah. He just played right into Middle Tennessee's hands. That's my like, problem with this offensive I, court. I hope he could adjust. I like what, what Mario opened the press conference up with by saying, this is on me. This is a poor job by me. Mm-hmm. You take full blame on the hell. You're making eight point a million. You got to, you know, and then you go in that meeting room, you get them one by one and you say, hey, bro, we got to tighten up. Yeah, okay, we got we got we got to do something. We got to probably figure this not out. in those words. Probably well, not, you know, probably it was not in, quite in those it was, words. It was in Spanish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he did something that Spanish yeah. talking over, over one of them little drinks in the little cup. Yeah, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. some cafecitos. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel pretty confident that there were some animated conversations behind yeah. closed doors yeah. uh, in that building on Sunday um, because it, it really was. It was, a, to, to me, a total organizational yeah. collapse. And, and you know, every layer of it broke down last yeah. week. And you yeah. can make a million excuses. It's unacceptable. Yeah. But um, so. But I still believe in my guy. I still believe in, in oh, the program. 100%. I still believe. I mean, it is what it is. But if Mario lost. can't do this, yeah. forget about it, man. Yeah. We, we, like, we, we might as well retire. Seriously. Yeah. Like, if Mario can't get this done. Someone, uh, someone you know, it's interesting me. that with all the bitching and complaining and all the people ripping Gary a new behind on, on, on Kane's board, which he's got tough skin. I don't have it like him. He's, <laughs> I mean, listen, it comes with you, the territory. What are you, but, a lizard? What are you, but, a lizard? But, if they beat North Carolina, how much you want to bet the whole tone changes? The whole tone let's, changes, no doubt. Let's all do the it. Tone changes. So you know what? I'm not giving up now. I'm going to see what happens. Yeah. But so, Lamar, let me finish that that subject yeah, so we don't right, get away from right. it. So this offense is not the right offense for Tyler Van Dyke. True, false, a bunch of baloney. Ah, uh, man. You know, I'm Might hoping. Might not be right for Miami. Period. I'm, I'm hoping it. I'm not giving up hope. I, you, you, Josh Gaddis was, uh, you know, he did some good stuff the last spot. And maybe he had the weapons and maybe he had the quarterback. I don't know. So I, I'm, I'm going to continue to give the guy a, a, a pass until I, upon further, uh, see some more of this football. But if it continues to get bad, then I'm going to have to turn on my man, just like everybody else doing. You know, I hate to do that. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. Um, you know, it, but I think it's going to get better. I, I really right. believe that they're going to go back this this week, take this opportunity to get better, figure some things out, and you know, let's not let's let's but let's not um give the defensive guys a pass either now. They oh, some, hey, we'll get to that. They got some stuff over there. We can't just <laughs> give them a bad. We're talking about Josh Gaddis. I mean, we can't get rid of the guy tomorrow. No, no, he's got to got to work on. But that defense too, they got some they got some. Some stuff going on over there too now. So here's my next question. All right. Neither Josh Gaddis nor Tyler Van Dyke has receivers to work with that were are as productive. I'll mm -hmm. use the word productive as what Tyler Van Dyke played with last year, mm -hmm. which was two guys 
that were not even good enough to get drafted into the yeah. National Football League, I will point yeah. out. But they were way better than what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, how does that impact the offensive coordinator and the quarterback that are taking the wrath of the entire Canes nation that wants scapegoats and blood for what happened on Saturday? And Restrepo. Restrepo being out. Um, you know, you can't you, – you just – we didn't have the social media back then. We just showed up at the stadium. <laughs> but now they got social media. You got to stay off it. You can't even turn the TV on. You got to – <laughs> just get back, get back to playing ball, man. Do they, get, tra- do they get get out of jail cards because no, they don't because no. they don't have the tools to work with? Um, no, I don't think nobody does. I mean, hell, you, I bet Josh Gaddis ain't going to Publix <laughs> not without a disguise on. I mean, shit, ain't nobody. I bet they ain't but, going. To, but ain't nobody gets a pass if you had Amon Richards, yeah. and. Oh. Daryl oh. Jones oh. and Lamar Thomas out yeah. there. We wouldn't be having this conversation about a loss because those guys wouldn't allow you to go out and play like that. But we're changing things. We, we, are, we, I, we I are, think, I think going, that's lost here, Lamar. That's we're, lost. We're going back to the drawing board. We're having those players only meetings. There's a lot of this. Might be some fights up in that thing. It might be some 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 people. The feeling say walking out with bloody noses and black eyes. And you also might have some guys that are open to throw to it from time to yeah, time. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, you're going you're gonna to have that because we're going to – Not to mention we're down to like one windows. running back. You, yeah, you might not need to be trying to force it through tight windows of the yeah. Texas A&M secondary to try to get the ball to receivers that aren't – that have no separation. Um, it all on my guys, man. They, no, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling all this together because here's, well, okay. so here's okay, my next – So here's my next question. All right. Is Tyler Van Dyke mm. – and I'm sure you've seen what's been going on the last few days. I, I, you know, I made, I came down saying Tyler Van Dyke does not deserve to be scapegoated for this. Mm-hmm. That that Tyler Van Dyke should start the North Carolina game and be mm-hmm. given an opportunity to play himself out mm-hmm. of this. Is that that's, what you said, Gary? That was my opinion, All right. and, and I think that that's what's going to happen. Okay? All right, here's here's my opinion. Tyler Van Dyke need to win that job this week. He need well, to compete. He, that's what I said yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Lamar, if you're if you're a coach, if you're a wide mm-hmm. receiver coach, and you see this kid struggling, walking mm-hmm. around with his head down, yeah, not 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 changing what's happening on the field in the right. practices, you can't start him. No, you can't. You, can't. you, you got to figure it out. You got to. You, you can't even go to one series deal. You yeah. know, it, 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 you you you, you lost it. You, you lost, lost it, bro. Forever. You lost it, and you know what? Obviously, you know you're you're. What does he drive a Bentley? What, what kind of car you got? Me? He got something nice. Oh, some I, nice I haven't some, seen the car. Some, some type of nice I don't, car. I don't think he drives a Bentley. No, nah, that, that's Ohio really State. Easy. My bad. My bad. That's Ohio State. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things, man. It's you, you lost a game that was probably worse than losing the FIU game. I mean, that, that game was. You, but you, did, did Tyler Van Dyke lose it or did the Miami Hurricanes lose it? Miami Hurricanes lost the game. Okay. Don't don't get it. Don't get it twisted. We're on but the he, same page. But he played a significant role in uh, yes. losing the game. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was just the, the bad luck, you know, the bad luck, the tip ball. You know, there's some things. I mean, we don't know. All I know is I did see a little spunk when the other quarterback came in. There's a little Free. bit more pep in the step. Now we don't know if if human nature had kicked in with Tyler Van Dyke where he is one of those guys that everybody don't want to be around no more. We don't know that. We don't know that. But you think about it, they're getting a lot of stuff handed to him. And how is this making – this is the thing I had the problem with this NIL, this whole NIL thing. That was my next question. Because <laughs> what is the jealousy rating on the team? The hater, the hater rating on the team. I mean, no I'm, looking, I'm looking at my man Gino. I love him to death. But if you're telling me Gino getting 500, and old LT, this man guy only getting 50? Come on, man. Bro. And that is what is taking place. I mean, yeah. he, like everyone's getting paid something, yeah. but yeah. but he is making astronomically more than anybody on the team. And that was going to be my next question. Does jealousy kick in? Because here's the deal. It's not like you're going to the NFL where it's already ingrained. You're, see, the college kids are not mature enough to handle another man's pocket. In NFL, you just you're slated in there. You're just saying I got to play to get my money, to get to where those guys are, and you don't complain about it. Well, in college, they're like, "Hey, man, 
you know, it's it. I, that's that was the thing with this whole nil thing in the beginning. I was like thinking how much jealousy there was going to be on a team that was immature without true leaders, and how that was going to work. And if let's say a guy like a guy turns into that Spencer Rattler guy, everybody on the team want to kick his butt. <laughs> you just never know. And who wants to play for a guy like that? You know, I don't know what TBD. I, I've heard all, all great things about him. I'm just throwing it out there that maybe. Oh, he's a very nice kid. Yeah, very, very, nice, very kid. nice kid. Yeah, but but I could see there being jealousy, you know, no doubt about it. But And maybe, and maybe he has too much stuff going on, too, that he's well, lost Well, that was going to be another one of my questions. He lost his confidence. Richard said, it, it, you know, you're right, Richard. He has no confidence. You can yeah, see. He's not playing like he did last year, but his right. whole world has changed. I mean, he's got a new head coach, a new yeah. coordinator, new he, system. He probably got a new couple girlfriends too. He's got one girlfriend. Well, who, no, he, does, um, he got one, he got a couple on the side. I can tell. You. I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. I don't. No, I don't think you're right about that. I can. I can, I can, I can but he does <laughs> have a, he does have agents following him all over right, the place. Right, right, right. You, you know, it got to the point where, like, I couldn't. There were a couple times, Lamar, and I and I know Tyler relatively well. That where I was just having casual conversations with Tyler. But, with Tyler at events and stuff. And one of his agents would walk up and, and, you know, make comments like next time we're going to charge you for that. Right. Um, you know, Hey Tyler, your dinner's over here. Right. You know, you know, like, Hey, you know, you're too big now to just be having a casual conversation with somebody like, you know, I mean, I mean, this is the, this is what the, Tyler Van Dyke was surrounded by yeah. in the off season. Um, he's NIL contracts like crazy people predicting him to go in the NFL draft, uh, people throwing him out there as a Heisman candidate. Um, Lamar, before you answer my question on, and you kind of did, and we're in agreement, he should have the opportunity to to compete in practice and show that he is shaking Mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. Um, he doesn't just get benched arbitrarily, which was my opinion. I got assaulted for it, but Mm -hmm. it was my opinion, but all of these things that have been going on in his life, um, could that be contributing to the way he's been playing? I mean, that's it, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. That is, a um, lot. I, I've seen I've seen that take you down. I mean, you know, the 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 last time I was around something like that, and you know, I'm just being honest with you guys. It was a sugar bowl. We were not truly focused. It was just too much stuff going on. Everybody's telling us we're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Agents everywhere taking us to dinner. We had limos, all kinds of things. And it's not an excuse. It's just we were not not mentally there that night. Great analogy. And, 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 and when, you, when you cannot play the highest level of football when you're not totally there, you can't. If you're thinking about other things, maybe even about getting hurt, oh, man, I can't get hurt now. I'm supposed to go in the first round. It just you it's not it's not that's not real that's not what you're used to so i mean i we can't we we can speculate that's what we're here for and it's just our opinions so don't hate us how about just all the us. overthrowing lamar I, i've yeah. seen a kid like he's trying to throw a hundred mile fastball every single time he throws the ball maybe he's trying to show his arm strength i don't know correct i i just know that other dude when he came in we i just saw a little spunk and and he was able to move the ball and um, I, I would love to be down there to watch the quarterback competition this week because I, I would hope that, that Mario's from the old school. You go back, you put him in quarterback competition. And, and if his feelings are hurt, then obviously you, you feelings are hurt. He's not the right yeah, guy. You, you're not the right guy, man. That's, yeah. that's what the competition. You won the job because another guy got hurt. Yeah. If, if, if you're the right guy, you're sitting there saying, I am not playing well and yeah. I, I'm going to get this fixed. Yeah. And you're yeah. living in the film room, and you're yeah. you yeah, you're you doing are, everything you're, possible, you're sleeping you, in the indoor. Yeah, for two weeks. You, you you are saying, hey man, hey guys, let's stay out there, and let's throw some throw some let's throw some rocks every let's day. Do let's do it, man. And you're telling the equipment staff to set up a cot for you in the indoor because you're not going home. Uh, if, yeah, if, if, I mean that's a nice if, place. If, Hell, I can I can sleep on that indoor. One hundred percent. Yeah, they, they, it's mean, not like the old school. That I, I was sleeping that thing. And, and he needs to need to um, have his followers and his handlers and whoever stay the hell away from stay me. The hell away, leave, leave me alone. alone. Correct. Correct. No yeah, doubt about it. Do. And you find out if he's the right guy yeah. by yeah. how he bounces back from from that experience. Right. And I think if he doesn't start against North Carolina, then we know what happened during practice. Exactly. It, it, it is what it is. I, I'm, yep. I'm pretty sure that guy, you know, he's from the same cloth. He's making those guys compete. 
Um, you know, I, I I feel bad for the guy because I think wasn't it his birthday, Mario? It was Mario's birthday, yeah. That's a hell of a birthday present. Hell of a birthday present, huh? Oh, um, all right, so let me since I'm like since I'm oh, on a roll here, putting you on the spot tonight. Oh my god. Yeah, let me throw out another one. At, let me throw another one out at you. All right, go ahead. All right, you're two and two. It's your first mm-hmm. year. You're trying to make a splash. Um, you're trying to build momentum. You're trying to recruit elite players. I can go on mm-hmm. and on and on about all the things that Mario Cristobal is trying to accomplish this year. Right. Now, you got a clean slate. Your ACC mm-hmm. schedule starting, Lamar. Um, right. Let's say you have to make. You're making the decision to start Jake Garcia whose experience Mm -hmm. consists of that quarter and a half the other day, Mm -hmm. a few throws against Bethune Mm -hmm. and Southern Miss, Mm -hmm. and a few throws against Southern Connecticut last year, has never Mm -hmm. competed in an ACC game, has never gone on the road and played in a significant uh, hostile environment. Any of those things that you are going to have to be able to do here over the next couple months if you are going to win the Coastal and get uh, to Charlotte. Um, does that make a decision like that more difficult? Well, here's the thing that, that guy that's been behind him has been waiting for his turn. You know, he's been, he's probably been chomping at the bit for his turn. Um, he felt like probably, Hey, I, I actually won the job. I should have been the next guy up, but it didn't happen that way. Hurt. And, and so, uh, he had to wait sit out i mean sit back and, and watch the other guy do his thing now for a whole year the world's are reverse now tyler van dyke you were sitting there before thinking man i'm third string when am i gonna get my opportunity you got it so now if you lose the job you got to be continue to work hard because you don't want uh and, you know if, if if the guy you get your opportunity again you got to be ready because if, if, if you're not ready and we put you in and now it's almost to the point where th- that guy's really not a, a, a good quarterback. You know, if he goes in there after, let's say, TBD, let's say he let's say he has a bad game and we put him back in. So he, ha- he has to be ready. Competition for those guys is going to be very important. And I think the guy that comes out of it uh, with the right mindset will be able to lead us. Because it's about mindset, competition. Uh, that's what it was on our practice field every day. And I know Mario knows this, but sometimes when you, I would think when he took over this program, you got all these people telling him how great this guy is, and he didn't want, maybe not want to hurt feelings. You know, maybe not want to hurt feelings and not want to make a change because you got Mel Kuyper saying he's a first round pick and all this other stuff. Well, maybe Mario thought the other guy was better. I don't know. Well, I, I know this. Mario's praise of Tyler Van Dyke only grew since he got here. I mean, yeah. it started out great and it ended up con- but, but that's all but that's also called making sure your quarterback has confidence. He ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah, right. well, I mean I saw that. enough out there. There there was right. no sign of this coming, Lamar. There was no sign at all of this coming. This is a total blindside uh monkey wrench curveball into this 2022 season. And my next question to you is, is a quarterback controversy, a quarterback competition in the middle of the season, a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing, man, because um, I think it's a good thing. I really do. I think, I think it's a good thing because, you know, you, you, you just lost a game that you, we, we, we had no idea was, we were going to play that bad. So, you got to show the whole team that it's about competition. Everybody should be competing. If just not one person not not competing, that's not that's not showing everybody's on the same level. You know, yeah. you're a team. You know, so I, I would say for the team's sake, they see that Tyler's competing against Jake. Okay, well I know I got to compete against this guy, and let's see who the best man wins. And we come out of it, we're better for Saturdays. I think there, the fact that Garcia stayed yeah. creates a lot of confidence in him because he could have bolted after last year and said, I'm not playing next year either. I'm not yeah. sitting on a bench for another 12 games. Yeah, but he, he, had been he had no reason to leave. I understand that, but he still could have said, I'm going, and he didn't. So he stuck it out, and now well, we'll, we'll figure this out. I don't think – I think that Van Dyke will start. Right. But if you start Jake, 
And Van Dyke may have a mental breakdown about not starting and may have his foot halfway out the door. But you need him because if Garcia gets hurt, you can't not have a, a Tyler Van Dyke on the bench. I don't want to go in. I'm, I'm not, or I'm, struggles I'm, being a starter for the first time. Right. right. I mean, like, like, who's to say they're going to go win all these games with a quarterback yeah. that's never played before? Like, I, I know. Yeah. I mean, when does that when does that happen with a team that is at the state that this team is at? Right. And I, I, I did not think I did not think we'd be having this, these type of conversation this early. I know. I, I thought maybe these conversations would come in ACC play. Maybe we'd slip up, but not against Middle Tennessee State. Oh, Jesus, man, the, the, the master plan was have a great season, go to the NFL, and then Jake takes over next year, like. That was the master plan. That that is out the window now. Like that is gone. Uh, I I think we all agree on that. I, 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 we have to touch on the defense because yeah, we will. Play. No, we will. Oh um, my god, right. that was horrible. We will. So um, let's do this. All right. Let's take a moment here and uh, let's hear from Canesware. Welcome to Canesware. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has all the latest merchandise for the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Inner Miami Soccer, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davy on University Drive, just south of I-595, or online at Canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. Yeah. Lamar, you can't let a loss to Middle Tennessee State have you lose your affinity for shopping. Okay, <laughs> you are Wait. surrounded by all the great merchandise that has been rolled out for the 2022 season. Um, Brett has the shelves loaded there at Canesware. All right, um, tell everybody why why they should join you in making a visit to Canesware. Well, I mean, first of all, when you talk about the shopping thing, man, that that uh, that that's funny because. You think about this when my wife sometimes goes shopping when she's sad. So you just try to keep her happy all the time, right? You you got to. So, oh man, this, this I'm trying to find this read right here. That's why I'm trying to stall. I start talking about my wife. No, you I can think. save the read for later and just talk from the heart. I well, mean, you're, sur you're surrounded I mean, this, by like. I mean, this, look, look, we got we got dying well stuff right here. My man dying well. This is a Sean Taylor. Shirt, right? Uh, hat. I mean, all this good stuff in here, man. This is um, my jersey from last week over there. Uh, it's some real good stuff in here, and it's packed all up in this little old spot. Which, by the way, they don't like me talking about, but they're gonna move down the, down the block a little bit to a big old spot where they're gonna make a studio, the LT36 studio, just for me. <laughs> uh, but man, what a great place! Got a lot of good stuff in here. Um, and and it's not only the Dolphins, I mean, the, the, the Kane stuff is Dolphins. It's that the soccer team with the Miami, inner, inner Miami. Uh, it's all kind of stuff in here. And they you see a tour, get... Any Tua jerseys? You see any Tua jerseys in there? Any Tua jerseys in here, Ken? No, not yet. They all got sold. So, uh -huh. you know, they're going to get, they're probably going to get some XFL stuff in here, you know. I mean, Tua, <laughs> Tua the, 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 the quarterback in town that has great receivers to throw yeah, to? Yeah, but he. Amazing how much better he looks, Lamar. It's just the opposite. Everybody yeah. wanted to run him out of town too, didn't they? That's right. <laughs> so, with that being said, hey man, just get we'll get a guy. We'll see what happens after this competition. Hopefully, there's some good competition this week, and uh, those receivers, you know, hopefully they will continue to get better. Um, they they had some flashes last week. They weren't as bad as they weren't as bad, but they had some flashes. They did some decent things. Right. Let me ask you a question. Who would you say is the best receiver? Well. Who's the best receiver out there now? Restrepo's hurt. Who's the best receiver that you see out there? Probably five. Five, right? Keyshawn yeah. Smith. Yeah. You want to hear something crazy that just supports what – and is part of my opinion that it was an entire organizational just exhausted like week off? Keyshawn Smith was on the field. They had 91 offensive reps. Of those 91, how many do you think he was on the field for? Uh, he's the main guy. He should be on the field for, what, 80, 70? 80, 80, 70, 80 of the 90, right? Right, right. You and I are on the same page. Right. 30. Look at his face. 
And he wasn't hurt, Lamar. He ran that kickoff back for a touchdown in the second half. Well, Somebody well, messed well, Lass, up. Lass, Lassen showed up a little bit. I, I, I you know, Lassen was out yeah, there for right. seventy. Yeah, but, Lass- but my point, but yeah, yeah, sixty nine, I believe. But my point is this: you were losing from the get go, man. Like yeah. this is no, this is no joke. Like that guy's your best receiver. He is your best chance to make plays down the field. Um, he needs to be out there every play. I mean, they played offensive linemen, I think, 98 snaps. I think it was 98 was the number, actually. He played like 30 of 98. The starting offensive linemen were in there every play, the whole game. Maybe maybe he had some cramps or something. You don't know. I don't think so, Lamar. He took some pickle. He had some pickle juice. I think they messed up. He had some pickle juice before the kickoff return. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, man. Like... I don't like. I, I'm with you. That guy's got to be out there seventy yeah. plays. I mean, you yeah. don't have the, the 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 luxury. He's the only legit deep threat too. How could you not have him on just for that purpose alone? You got to line him up. Well, somebody said he was sick during the week. That's that's Dro. Dro said he was sick during the sick during the week. He so, didn't look sick uh, when he was. Did when anybody he was doing, say that after the game? I don't know. When, when he was doing good things out there. I mean, um, and yeah. when you're losing ten nothing in the first part of the first quarter to Middle Tennessee State, I'm not sure sick matters anymore. Um, all right, Lamar, I want to sw- let me switch gears here. All right, let's go. To Rick Stockstill. Okay, right. so you were at Western Kentucky. Mm-hmm. But you know what it's like mm-hmm. to be the underdog, mm-hmm. have that chip on your shoulder, mm-hmm. going to play the big boys. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, what is going through his mind before the game? We'll talk about after the game here in a minute. What what was going through his mind before the game? Well, you want your, you know, they had a great game plan. They, you know, he had to make sure those kids had the confidence that we could, that they could go out and execute that game plan. Um, and I'm pretty sure he said, if we can get up on them, if we can get up on them, we're not going to lose this game. And that when you speak that into those kids and it happens and they get up on them, they, they automatically think we're not going to lose this game. So uh, you, you're, you're just speak. You're just very positive during that week. You're very positive. Even Bobby Petrino was positive during a, a week against Kentucky or or us trying to go up against Tennessee or something like that, because there's no sense in beating them down. You got to give You got to have them go in there with all the confidence in the world. So hopefully that confidence can continue and it be one of those aha moments like, oh, crap, we actually can beat these guys. Well, I'm not scared. I'm going to go in there and run in there and bust one of them up. You know, but just think if, if they were scared, it would be a, a, a totally different uh, outlook on it. Oh, man, I don't know if I'm good enough to go against that guy. I, I saw the confidence continue to grow. And by halftime, they were world beaters. They were world beaters by halftime. When they came out second half, it was not a letdown. It was no letdown in those guys. And Rick did a good job of – I think Rick probably took enough ass whoopings at Florida State against Miami that he, he it really meant something to him to win this game because the way he – I mean, hey, it is what it is. They won and, you know, they got $1.5 million. <laughs> Yeah, $1.5 million. I mean, where, where where is that school anyway? You know, I was trying to figure that out. I don't I mean, know. I, 1. I, I just... 1.5 million up in Middle Tennessee is probably they gonna they man they they got some new bars down there. They can get enough hookers for a month. Yeah, they can do a <laughs> lot of things up in Middle Tennessee. That's in the middle of Tennessee. You know, we think. talked about Florida it's State. Mur- Murfreesboro. 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 Yeah, you go. So when you played Florida State, didn't you have a letdown the week later? All, all the guys I talked to said the same thing. They played Florida State, and the week yeah. after, no matter what, they were they were or the, still, or the they week were before dead. the week before. The week before all right, we were you know obviously it's human but, nature. These are kids; they're not robots. But you get out there, man, and you have to, uh, you know, my what I I used to always think that if I can make one big play, it get us pumped up. You know, yeah. if I can take my helmet off and do something like that, it'll get us pumped up. Get these guys rocking and rolling, or go up and down that sideline talking noise or see a good play by the defense or something like that. You just well, need something. That that, that's, nice. that's leadership. That nice, that's leadership. That's yeah. leadership too. They had an answer for everything. Every time we were close, they stopped us at the goal line. Every time we scored within two seconds, they were in the end zone. They had an answer for everything. 
And, you know, as bad as the offense was, our defense sucked. Plain English, they sucked. Yeah, we're going to talk about them in a minute. They're no. not They're not going scot-free on this show for no. sure. No. Uh, <laughs> but, but uh, so LT, so now you win the game, okay? Right. And right. you, you 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 played the the you played the rocky thing and mm-hmm. you win the game. Do you handle yourself with dignity? Do you act like you have been there before, or do you become the Lamar Thomas of coaching and take your helmet off and wave to the crowd and run your mouth like there's no tomorrow? This is a big moment for those for that team for that organization for the program. I mean. You know, some guys handle it differently. And I, I think for him personally, again, you know, think about it. He he had to play against Miami back in the day. And he's know, he knows about the history of the program. And he probably told them they are not the same Miami. I remember coaching against Miami, telling my guy, that is not the same Miami. That is not the same Miami. Believe me, that is not – you will not see Benny Blaze out there. You will not see, you know, half time the kids didn't know who I was talking about. Well, you know, I had to mention somebody like Michael Irvin, somebody was on the Warren staff. You will not see those guys out there. So don't get it twisted. Go out there and play them just like any other team. That you on the helmet means nothing. That's what I told the guys at Louisville. It means they don't mean the same thing. And what helped me, they didn't even have the same uniforms I played in. So I was like, shit, I don't know that team. They had some green crap on that night up in Louisville. <laughs> it looked terrible. And we kicked their behind. So, you know. That's what he probably told him, man. Just don't get it. Don't, don't, don't think of the 30 for 30. That is done. The only thing over there that's they just got trophies in the room. This is a Miami team. Go out there and play against them and let's we, see. We don't have anybody that scares either either coordinator, do we, Lamar? The other team's coordinators, who are they scared of? Who do you uh, got to watch out for? Sap? Not there. Russell, not there. Cortez, no, not there's, there. No, there's, there's no if, you if you're not scared there. of the quarterback, nope. then you're not scared of anybody. Yep. And um, they got $1.5 million. <laughs> and they got – so anyway, so here – this is Rick Stock still right after the game. Fantastic win. Extremely proud. Happy for our players. Uh, it's always – fun to do stuff that nobody thinks you can do and uh coming down here 26 point dogs and uh kicking their butt like we did because it was a butt kicking it was no fluke to this and uh just really proud of our team the toughness that we played with we were the tougher team here tonight it was a butt kicking there was no fluke to this we were the tougher team all true by the way i I wonder what I wonder what type of moonshine he got when he got back there. I'd say like apple or maybe cherry or something like that. Pear, <laughs> moonshine. But you look, he looked like a moonshine drinker. So he, he had, they had all kind of moonshine for him, boy. Cause, but he was excited, man. I can't. I can't, I mean, I I I, I tweeted that, <laughs> man. I, I don't know how I would have took that if I'd have saw him in a local uh, watering hole and he said that after the game. I don't know how what, how I would have reacted, but. He deserved it, man. They won a game yeah. that no one thought they were going to win, and not win it by the last second. They dominated. They dominated. Well, then he goes on local radio. Oh man, it's more. Oh yeah, and he oh. says, and he says this, Lamar. Two goal line stands. We stop them down there. They ran for 194 yards against Texas A&M, the number whatever team in the country. Mm-hmm. They ran for 68 against us. They averaged 1.6 yards per carry. They gave us 1.5 million, but they got 1.6 yards per carry. But, you know, just, I don't know where that came from. Hey, you, hey, that came, I'll tell you where it came from, Coach. It came from your soul. Hey, you talking about? It came from your soul, Coach. <laughs> 1.5 million. They gave us 1.5 million, and we held them. 1.6 yards per carry, Lamar. <laughs> no. Hey, man. Hey, that's probably you see, the greatest you see the girl who was producing the show? She's yeah. like, oh! Jason, Jason said it best. He deserves a gloat, man. He's he's auditioning for a new job. Good for him, man. Good for him. I mean, it, it is what it is. This is his moment in the sun. His five minutes of fame. 
And because uh, hopefully if they don't go out next week, they get they behind kit like they were doing beforehand. Um, it, it, it's back to the same old. You know, we we'll we'll have that in our hearts and in our heads. And now he's thinking about keeping his job. So good for him. Kudos to Murfreesburg and the and the the, the, the <laughs> Apple Martini. No, not not Apple Moonshine that they got up there. Good for them. <laughs> if Lamar Thomas were face to face with Rick Stockstill. Would Lamar Thomas walk away from that meeting needing the law office of Christine Rosendahl, phone number, <laughs> phone number at the bottom of the screen, because Christine is there for any Kane, any Kane's fan that gets themselves in any kind of trouble, she will get you out of trouble. Christine Rosendahl, Esquire, PA, 561-512-6199. Lamar does not leave his home without her business card. Would Lamar Thomas oh need God. that business card if he were face to face right now in Canesware with Rick Stocksville? You know, I have to go back to I'm assistant head coach now. So I would. <laughs> yeah, you're saying, you're saying, oh yeah. man, I'm an assistant head coach now. Yeah, would, Gary's putting to, me on the spot here all night. I would, to, I would have to walk away and think about my future. So <laughs> I would let him glow. He deserves it, man. Kudos to. Uh, he probably got some red man in his pocket and, uh, <laughs> going to town. I, I, th I bet you things are changing up there, boy. Look, by, by the way, for those who don't know, Lamar is now the assistant head coach of the Orlando franchise of the XFL, which will be coming onto your television sets, I guess, uh, this spring. Yeah, um, this spring, in February, in late February. Who, who got the contract, Lamar? Huh? Who has the contract? For the TV, TV contract. Uh, well, you know, the, the, Dwayne, uh, Mr. Johnson, the owner Dewey. of the league, um, Dewey, Dewey. Uh, The Rock. Uh, he's the owner of the league, and he has – it hurts to say that. But um, he has the um, – you know, he has a relationship with Disney. And what comes along with Disney, he's made a bunch of Disney movies, made a lot of money. What comes along with Disney, ESP, ESPN and ABC. So we, awesome. we signed a lucrative deal with them, and we'll be on there for a couple of years. So it's it's a great thing. It's an awesome thing. Uh, Can't wait to see those Orlando yeah. receivers, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna drop any calls. Can't wait to see those Orlando receivers. Hey, the good thing about it, it's not like college where you're stuck with them for the whole year. That's I just right. go to the gym and say, "Hey, get rid of him." Hey, you gotta go. If we come up there, go. if we come up there, you get you're hooking Gary up with some and I up with some seats, right, man? Oh yeah, no, no, no. We have no, no seats, man. Y'all on the field, baby. Oh, all right. Yeah, you get field passes, man. Um. Yeah. All right. So let me phrase the question this way. All right. Would you be taking Rick Stockstill <laughs> next door, next door to Canesware to Mission Barbecue, the oh, yeah. the fantastic restaurant that is feeding you so well this evening? Oh, only if they have arsenic. I, I probably I probably would take old Rick over there because you know he sounded like a good old country boy, and then they got barbecue over there, which I have the pulled pork tonight, the pulled pork with some French fries. I actually got two orders of French fries because I ate one, which they're gone because my daddy said don't eat on the screen. There you go, dad. And now I have my pulled pork and French fries for later on. Mm -mm. Yeah, buddy. But I I would take old Rick on over there and we would sit down and talk some country stuff. Maybe even sneak a bottle of moonshine in there and some red man. And uh, we'd go, go have a good time over there. Thank All right. So, so now my next loaded question. All right. <laughs> I'm on a roll tonight, man. This is a, this is fun. You're a lawyer. No, man, this is fun. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm like. This is the deposition of Lamar Thomas. It's like a deposition, yeah. Um, all right. So now you got Rick Stock still. Mm-hmm. In Mission Barbecue, you guys are mm -hmm. having dinner and, you know, chomping it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. The red man got my cup. What's he going to tell you <laughs> about the Miami defense that he shredded? Mm. Um, and I've got, I've got the figures. His quarterback, Chase Cunningham, went mm. 16 of 25 for 408 yards and three touchdowns. Lamar, this was the first time... In this century, and nobody knows how much further back this fun fact goes, right. that a quarterback threw for 400 yards 
with 16 or fewer completions wow. against FBS competition. Wow. 98, 89, 71, and 69-yard passes in the game. They had not had, coming into this game, a single completion of more than 60 yards since 2019, Lamar. Since 2019, <sighs> they had not completed a pass over 60 yards. They had four of them mm. against the Miami defensive backfield. Lamar, what the heck was going on out there? What happened on Saturday at Hard Rock Stadium? Well, it sounds like they watched a lot of film on, on the secondary. And um, they obviously knew what they were doing. They got the matchups they wanted, and they exploited them. I mean, obviously, our guys did not play well, and they got exposed. Um, the, the, the scheme, whatever the scheme was, you might need to change that halfway through the game and say, hey, let, it's kind of like on uh, that one football movie where the, the defense coordinator and the offense coordinator, he said, hey, man, I, I, they kicking my butt. I need help. He should have changed his whole game plan and been like, man, let me back the hell up and let them call more plays and run more plays and then being saying, oh, well, we're a better team than them and challenge them and them saying, no, you're not. Yeah. You know, you got to at some point change. And that quarterback – was able to scramble out of some things. Yes, he was. And, and the gap containment was abysmal from the mm -hmm. D-line. The linebackers were steps too slow and taking bad angles, and so was the secondary. It was a total 11-man flop. He yeah. was just not prepared. And not being prepared, but two weeks before that, when they were playing Southern Miss, they had a bad first half, and they made adjustments right. on offense. But what, there was no adjustment in this game. No, nothing worked. I don't. I didn't see anything different. They should have been playing zone too deep, whatever, and made them throw underneath. Especially when you don't have the speed that they don't that they have. You can't do this. That's what's scary about some of the things we're seeing. It's not just Mario. It's just oh my god, all across the board. Mario can't do anything about he that. He can't do anything really, about that. Like yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like that's why I call it a total organizational mm -hmm. collapse. Mm -hmm. Just just everything was so messed up and yeah. And so flawed, and and that just you know, and then I you know I say to myself, um, how does that happen? How can that happen? And the only explanation I can come up with is mental and physical fatigue. Mm. Like the, we have, we are upset. We're tired. We're beat up. Mm -hmm. We play Middle Tennessee State this week, and then the off week, and then so the you, off week, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's time to catch up on some sleep. Mm. Oh, it could it, you could be right, Gary. I mean, but that's all part of the, of the of the business. I mean, you took a job, and let's talk as far as coaches. You took a job knowing that this man, you got a lot of money. You know this man was gonna grind it out. He's a grinder. So you knew coming into it what the deal was gonna be. Players, you were begging for it. You got it. You got a grinder. Um, and things are changing. Uh, and then maybe this was a good thing. We'll see. I mean, maybe yeah, we'll guys, look at this like this. It could be a good thing because you got to make it a good thing. We, we you got to make it a good thing. But we were not expecting, you know, we were not expecting. I, I kept saying I said four losses. I said two at first, and I saw some things I didn't like. I said four. Okay, I didn't know it was going to be Middle Tennessee. Right. I trust in this guy primarily because we were in the trenches together. I mean, well, he was in the trenches. I was on the outside. But we lined up on the line again sometime when I played X. Never in the um, yeah, I was not in the trenches. I ain't even shipped down and even fake like it. No, no, no. Um, so I trust in him, and I believe in that staff. I believe that um, they have enough experience on that staff to make the, the proper adjustments. Um, and no, you know what's funny, you guys? A few months ago, these same people that are writing these comments on Kane Sport in the posts – when we had that run of the recruits, the four- and five-star guys, mm -hmm. they weren't talking like this. They were laughing at everybody else, and we're going to beat Florida State and Florida and Alabama, you're next. And we could look at who we're getting. We're just, this is just the beginning. Guess what? Now they've turned on this guy in two minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. Th that's just hypocritical. Yeah, you can believe it or not. You can't do that, guys. You can't turn on your coach. You can't. You just got here. You can't. You know, yeah, I mean, we just everyone's mad, everyone's angry, but we got to get it together now. In the lobby, Lamar, 
<laughs> is a guy that is an absolute grinder. Yeah. Um, a guy that absolutely would have run by defensive backs. Yeah. Except he would have been wearing a Canes uniform, like, like what we, and, you know, it, it, along the lines of what we saw Saturday at Hard Rock Stadium. And now he has a title behind his name, PhD. Okay. Mm. So he's going to come on here right now and he is going to make sense of all of this for he's us. Explain it all. Yeah, Jones, <laughs> welcome to the Madhouse. Welcome hey, to glad to be on. Thomas Show. Hey, What's glad up, to be on, man. It's uh, uh, it's still good to be a cane, even though we didn't like oh, that, yeah. that that Saturday game, but it's still good to be a cane. <laughs> Daryl, let me let me thank you for coming on tonight. But let me ask you a question. I saw you before the game. Yeah, I saw you before the game. You had the biggest smile on your face because you know what? We were at home. The boys were there. You know, we we chumping it up. We giving high five. We giving the love. Yeah. Did you know or did you think? Because you got a great relationship with the man up above. Did he tell you this? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you, man, I, I was uh, I was shocked by the Middle Tennessee game. And I wasn't so much shocked by um, losing. It was mm. how we lost. Mm. Uh, we, got, we got it handed to us. And what I didn't like. Being a wild out and, and Lamar, I know you 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 feel this because uh you know we you know you 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 were huge in my life as a cane. I remember freshman year you coming in fussing at us about the offense only goals as the receiver goes, you know. So I, I that always stuck with me. And I did I did, two things was like the only time our guys were really getting by their defenders was double moves, and their receivers were running by our DBs. Running by and I was like, guys. I did not like what I saw. I don't know if we weren't prepared, we took them for granted, or <laughs> if we're just not as athletic as I thought we were, you know, from that standpoint. Mm. And so that was a little frustrating, but when it comes to overall, uh, man, I know it's a, hey, it's year one for, for mm. Mario. Um, it's a lot. I mean, you know, with th the landscape has changed so much with transfer portals and all this kind of mm. stuff. So it's so new trying to get his guys in from recruiting. It's, it's going to take two or three years to really put his stamp on it. Um, what I want to see more of, and I've seen it when I went to practice, just kind of that, that that the change in the culture when it comes to a culture of competitiveness. Mm -hmm. I want to see competitiveness, and uh, and I, I will say a little bit did I did see some guys on the field that didn't quit, I did see some guys that kept going hard, and that's what I wanted to see. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw some guys that tucked their tails in, and mm -hmm. I hope the coaches saw who they were because mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna keep it 100 if that's how you're gonna respond. Man, you're gonna have to watch the game like I'm watching the game now, man. We can't mm. have you on that field, man. You got to watch with us, you know, because uh I, I can't have somebody tucking their tail and quitting or pouting and 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 and, and getting emotional. No, no, I need you to focus, I need you to work, and I need you to grind, and I need you to compete till till till, till you can't compete anymore. And so uh I think Mario's doing that. Uh this this loss hurt just from the standpoint. I don't know if y'all saw, I saw the coach. Talking about how they kicked our butts, and I just—I mm -hmm. mean, he went lying, but I don't like hearing people talk like that. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I need—I need these boys to bounce back. I need them to bounce back. Now, now, as as a as a pastor, and as a doctor, yeah. Uh, so, 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 did you did you pray about your your anger about this? Did you did you, did you, <laughs> did you have a conversation with the man up above and just say, hey, give, you the, give you the I'm strength? About Hey man, I'm always I'm always trying to be a good witness, brother man. I'm always right. trying to lose, you know, anything. But I, I'll say, man, I'm a I, with that, you know, I, my that passion doesn't go away. That same passion okay. I had with the game is the same passion mm -hmm. I had with ministry and my family and okay. everything like that. So I still get fired up. Folk get folk think like I just don't care anymore, you know, about the game. No, I get fired up, man. I get it, I get excited either way. And so um, so I, I love the game, I love I, I love my canes. And so hopefully, um, you know, and I'm 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 not fair weather, man. I'm 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 gonna right. support the kids, you know what I mean? I'm a I'm gonna come in there and fuss at them if I need to. If they let me come in there, you know, uh usually about once a year I get to speak to the team. So I'm a mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna say some stuff I think they need to hear. Uh well we but, know we uh, know we know it won't be no cursing in it. So no, I no, it won't, won't be none of that, won't be none of that. I I I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> and let me let me ask you this, Darrell. You know, we got a lot of guys that have gone on to in the ministries. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, on the Rudy Barbers, the uh, Derek Golden, the Kenny Berries, all these guys. Yeah. How did, how were you able to navigate that? 
in college because yeah. I, I I know me personally. Yeah, I I, I feel I feel yeah, I yeah. feel hard, yeah, brother. Yeah. I feel hard. Yeah. But you know, how were you able to navigate that? Is it, I'm gonna tell you what's what's interesting about that man. I you know I'm I'm coming from Dallas, Texas. Uh, you know, that's mm, I hear it. Like, in, I hear it in your voice. That's like you hear in the voice. I'm, I'm, I want to keep my accent. I don't want to lose my accent down here. You know, <laughs> but uh, you know, being a Dallas boy and and that's considered also you know the Bible Belt. And I came from that Christian kind of household mm -hmm. and, and how I was raised with my dad. My dad was an associate pastor, all of that. So mm -hmm. uh, people were already shocked when I committed and signed to Miami because they were like, mm -hmm. no way, shape or form are you a Miami hurricane, you know? Uh, and, 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 and the truth be told, truth be told, I thought, you know, guys, you know, like Bruce Gary, man, growing up in Dallas, I, I come from the same high school as Jesse Armstead. And mm -hmm. so I watched Carter. Jesse, Carter. I come from Carter. Dallas Carter. And I, I remember going to the games, watching Carter just destroy people. We thought Jesse was our world. Jesse was the greatest thing ever. You know what I mean? Growing up for us. And then he goes to Miami. So me coming up through middle school, high school, I can never imagine even being able to be considered to go to Miami. You know what I mean? I, I had no intention, never thought. And then here I am going to Miami and uh, people were like, man, you don't, you don't really fit Miami. And, and, and it's, 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 it's actually a both and because in some ways right. I don't fit Miami, but I also, right. I'm a cane through and through because I am a competitor and I right. will grind and I will work and, and, and you're not going to outwork me. If I lose, you beat me, you know? And so right. I, I, that attitude is actually one of the things that drew me to Miami when I got to, got around the guys and stuff. So now, you know, when I came on my visit, it was the Miami visit, you know, it was, it was, it was buck wild, you know, <laughs> well, tell too much now. Hey, I guess I guess that's too much. It was, your it was your congregation might be listening. Your congregation <laughs> might be listening. And I, and I, I, the funny thing is, I left my visit like, yeah, I ain't going to Miami, man. It's too, it's all the same, you know. Uh, it came down to it, man. Me and my dad were really praying about it, and some things that just jumped out was my the coaches, uh, Curtis Johnston, the receiver coach, mm -hmm. pushing them. They were so honest with me. They were like, "Look, we got these guys. We want you." And I remember Curtis Johnston looked at my face. He said, "My top three. I want you." I want Daryl Jackson. Daryl ended up going to Florida. But he's like, I want you. I want Daryl Jackson. I want Reggie Wayne. He said, if you're ready to play, I'm going to play you. If you're not ready to play, I'm a red shirt. I'm going to play you. Everybody else was telling me the sweet nothings. He was honest. Right. So I couldn't buy him. And wow. all the things that going to Miami, and you guys know how to navigate, like each year. Now, I wasn't, I wasn't perfect. You know, man, sometimes right. my boundaries right. are a little too big. Right. But I will right. say each year I did get more serious in yeah. my faith, man, and I did get more serious. And so even some people know this, some people don't, but for the 01 championship, uh, I was serious about my faith and following Jesus, man. And I was actually married. I was like the uncle in the locker room, you know? And so uh, I was the married dude in the you locker room. You were that room. guy. You were that guy. That guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, my teammates, my teammates loved me, man. And they respected right. me. You know, they saw right. I worked hard. I was going to ball. I was going to compete. Yeah. I made plays. But then also they, they they saw my consistency, you know what I mean? Even they, they saw the and they saw the growth, mm -hmm. I think, in me too. Mm -hmm. So they respected mm -hmm. me for it. And that's yeah. when I like to tell young guys, I'm like, hey, no matter where you are, you know, if you if you stand and and, and you show that consistency and they work it, your guys will respect you and they'll mm -hmm. love you. And so a lot of guys love me, man. And and it's funny because years later I become the preacher, right? But it was funny, mm -hmm. like guys like Edron James was like, Man, you was already preacher, man. We was already calling you. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, I never back then. I never even thought about it like right. that. You know, I just wanted right. to. Obviously, I wanted to go. I, the funny thing is, I was praying. I was like, I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, help me be on the part of a national championship. I want to win the Heisman, and I just want to tell people I love the Lord. That's all I want to do. You know, like and uh, uh -huh. I got one of them. I got. Yeah, I got to win the championship. Right. I ain't get close to the Heisman, but I did win the championship. <laughs> yes. And that yeah. was arguably one of the greatest teams ever played at the University oh, of Miami. Oh, man. You know what? With all, with, with all those yeah, players, yeah. great I, players. Talking about oh, speed, yeah. Daryl, are you, you, you watching what's going on? Uh, let's start with the defensive backs. I mean, you must be oh. sitting there. I can still play against these guys. What's oh, the man. We, we got to – look, man, we, we got to get faster. We got to get speed in here, man. I, You know, it was funny. After the game, I was talking to some people about that, and I said, hey, you know, some people are like, hey, are these guys going to be trying to – decommit all that i said no nah, this this is a recruiting tool now you go mm -hmm. to the top guys be like hey you ready to play yes. we need players we need athletes we need speed. we need you know it's like because we we you will we don't get run by like that I, it mm -hmm. was sickening it was and we normally have guys that run by people you know mm -hmm. and i'm like we we, we got to get back to that even it, you know y'all don't understand like lamar you know hear me say this but when i was coming up man watching 
I, I got to watch Michael Irvin, but that was mm -hmm. Miami was otherworldly for me, you know, being in Dallas. Then I'm watching, and Jesse goes to Miami, so now I watch Miami all the time. Mm -hmm. And I see Lamar and Horace and, and Kevin K-Dub from Dallas. K-Dub yeah. from Roosevelt. Roosevelt. We cheering for them. Yep. They running by people. It was just, that's just what Miami do. You know, so when we got there, that's like the expectation. You know, it was like, hey, you know, and I, I knew that's what I brought to the table. It was like, run. So even one day, a couple years ago, I went off on the receivers doing running drills. And I'm like, who? How are you in the back? And I said, I hate to be the old guy, but when there was ever any kind of sprint, <laughs> I was in front. Well, I was the fastest yeah. guy. And you know who was chasing me and trying to beat me every time? Santana was trying to beat me every single time. What happened is we all got better. You know, yes. then, you had got, then, then you had guys that went back down from, you know, Clint Porters was always trying to beat me. And Philip Buchanan and then Andre Johnson. Mm -hmm. And what happened? We got better. You know what I mean? And, and those guys go on. And, and I'm that's what I want to see. I think Mario is bringing that attitude when it comes to practicing that co competition and competing mm -hmm. and driving and getting better. Because if it's about trying to make a time, you know, you got so much time to get back and forth. Man, that's trash. No, no, you're not getting better with that, man. You got to you got to push yourself. And so that 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 that's really the greatness behind Miami is that competitive nature and everybody getting mm -hmm. better and, 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 and creating champions with that. It's a, it's a mindset. And, and I hope we can get back to that. And that's something I think that's different from every other school. I, I joke with guys that go to other school. You know, I talk, I got buddies went to Alabama and you know, whatever I joke with, I said, man, yeah, you know, somebody going to win the championship, but it ain't, it ain't the same when, when you got that you on your helmet, it's a difference. It's a yeah. difference. And the truth be told, Lamar, I don't, I don't, I don't I, I won't put nobody name out there because they did confide in me, and so I don't want to. But I've had a lot of cats that went to Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, USC. Till when I was playing in the pro, they come, hey man, keep it real, man. I really did want to go to Miami. I wish I could have went to Miami. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I had dudes. Oh, yeah. that, I had to do it in Florida State. Part of that '99 mm -hmm. championship, he was like, man, I want to go to Miami, but my mama wouldn't let me go to Miami. Yep. She thought I couldn't make. <laughs> Yeah. Have, you know, you get you get to the league like you did with the Giants and yeah. the Vikings, yeah. uh, the Bears. You you run across these guys, yeah. And they find yeah. out you went to Miami first. They want to find out if you tough. Yeah, so you a yeah. Miami guy. They want to find out yeah. they're gonna always challenge you on your tough. Uh huh. And you, uh -huh. Probably pray, you probably prayed for them, but I called them. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, hey, 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 Lamar, I tell people this, you know, the Lord gave me speed, so shame on me if I don't run by you, right? I mean, like, I, got, I, got, I got to run by you. Right. Hey, 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 LT, you know what? If you didn't tell us he was a preacher, I would have guessed it in two seconds. He, uh, he's just going and going and going. This whole congregation is just listening to Daryl go. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You're the, awesome. Fact, the, fact that, the fact that all those guys that I mentioned beforehand, I mean, they – we – you knew some guys you just know you know it, it, you just kind of you can tell you know that not saying they're not saying all you just know that they're serious about they 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 they'll you'll go in their room and they're reading the bible and you just back out <laughs> you back, you back out like this, for me that's the personal time because i'm about to do something i shouldn't be telling my mom about you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> you kind of just back out <laughs> you let them have their little space, you know, and yeah, you know, yeah. so it, it, it is what it is. You know, you remember how? I, well, before you got there, Daryl, we had guys that were married. They lived in the married housing. Okay, and you, okay. you kind of say, "Hey, man, he live in the married housing, man. He over there, he married." <laughs> you know, you just you see him at the train the table, and you know they taking, you know they 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 taking. They taking a plate. Like this. <laughs> yep. And Miss Sarah, they taking the big yeah. old thing yeah. home. <laughs> and uh you're like, dang, we got a family yeah. to feed and junk, you know what I yeah, mean? So yeah, yeah. It's, it's respect, it's always respect. You just like dang, yeah. yeah. Well, I am not ready for that right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I, I used to actually like, I used to use it as a tool, and my guys, you know, they would they would laugh, but they also would listen to me. It was funny. So uh that, like so I'm I, Lamar Lamar knows the family because my, my wife's family all went to UM. So I'm yeah. I married Kamika, uh you remember. Keisha, Mike Barrow used to date yes, Keisha. Yes, there. Yes. I met Keisha's little sister. So it's funny because everybody knows. So everybody know the family and stuff. And, and so that my wife at school had a lot of respect. You know, now now she had it going on. So there was a few players trying to outdo me. They were trying to, they were trying to, I won the prize though. I won at the end, you know. But uh, yeah, she, uh but everybody they knew she was, hey, she was a she was the kind of she was that kind of girl to be like, hey, mm -hmm. if I'm gonna settle down, that's the type of girl I would want to 
you know, be right. with. And so she already had a lot of guys respect too. So, but with that is, I would use it as a tool. I'd be joking, like, you know, catch talking about going out. Now, me and her would go out and hang, have fun. And what they right. saw was, right. you could be serious about your faith and, and have fun. Like, I was, I right. got joy. I'm smiling. I have right. a good time. Right. I laugh. I joke. I am a clown. Some you may pick up on it. I'm a clown. Uh, I like to, you know, joke around with people. And uh, but I would joke. They'd be like, they'd be like, they going out. And they'd be like, oh, DJ can't go out. He got to go home to his wife. So I'd be like, I said, sure, y'all. I, I got a sure thing at the crib. Yeah, I know what I'm about to do. Y'all scared. And I said, y'all scared? You you don't know what you, if somebody going, you know, if you're going to take something away that you don't want to take away, you know, I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> but, but God, you know, we, we we would joke like that and stuff. And uh and I, I enjoyed it, man. I enjoyed it. And um I think, too, you know, I think my, I think I actually use it because my, my guy saw that, uh, Almost, I want to say I might have even start. I became a harder worker. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, I kind of, mm-hmm. I kind of took. You know, I, I kind of, in a sense, kind of became like this senior leader. Mm-hmm. And so everything I did, I was trying to be out in front. And it was weird because the 2001 season is, it's, it's interesting because if you think about that season, Santana and Reggie had just left. I had had a pretty big game in the Sugar Bowl. It was supposed to be my show in spring ball. Dorsey was giving me all the balls throughout the summer. I get all the balls. First game of the year, I get the first catch. You know, I mean, all this stuff. And then I get hurt. I miss half the season. And I'm like, Lord, what? I'm, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. But during that time, I learned a lot about, hey, uh, even in this walk with the Lord, I don't I do not do it just so I can get a blessing and play good on football. It's just my, it's my life. But mm-hmm. also, it matured me because I'd be the first one in the meeting rooms. I'd be the first mm-hmm. one in the training room. Uh, uh, I became like, like, like kind of like a player coach. And then when I came mm-hmm. back healthy, we were right back rolling and, you know, we were beating yeah. up everybody. And, uh, and, and the thing was, it was like, Andre, I, I joke, I joke about this. I said, uh, if, if in the national championship game, the first touchdown, it was a twin set. It's double post. Um, the way the film show was every day in practice, Dorsey threw me that post. It was to the front pot line. I think it's touchdown. That's, that's where it's going to go. The free safety takes, uh, comes down on me. Everything on film, the free safety would go with the top post. He doesn't. He comes down to me. So I look up. I see the ball. I'm like, man, what's going on? I look. I see the free safety. I'm like, Dre been killing people all year. You supposed to be covering him, right? Like, I'm, I'm I've been hurt. I'm like, what you doing? But uh, it was, it was funny because when I say I was supposed, I, I became, I matured because Dre was this red shirt sophomore that hadn't had much time. We had Kevin mm-hmm. Beard. We had Jason Gathers. We mm-hmm. had a lot of talented guys. But I was, I'm glad to be part of where, like, when I, because I was hurt, I went to another level. And it was like, I was like a secondary coach. So, like, even when it came to discipline, they'd come tell me and be like, hey, so and so, uh, Miss Class. I'm like, oh, okay, I got that sand pit, you know. So, so, you know, we, but, but, but to kind of help shape that and be a part of that, man, I, 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 I'm grateful for it. And then, you know, to come back and, uh, the, the only thing I'm a little salty was, man, because I was hurt, uh, my stat, my draft status dropped a little bit, but then it dropped because I ain't had no stats because we blew everybody out. That's, that's, that's right. <laughs> they taking me out right. of the game. I'm like, no, I got an argument with CJ uh, Lamar. I said, man, put me back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can see that too. Down. Like you don't sit down. Oh, I like I, I, more catches, man. <laughs> hey, I probably was there on the sideline because that's when we could do that. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Those yeah. days went away. They're back a little bit. They're Aaron Judge just hit 61, if, just if anybody cares. Oh, congratulations. He just hit right, right, there you go. Who was oh, that yeah. against? Who was that against, anyway? Who, who did he hit that yeah. one run against? Um, I'm not sure who they played. I'm Toronto, sure they'll, I'm sure they'll play it over and over again. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. so let me ask you this, D. So if you had a chance to go sit in that receiver room. Oh, yeah. Good question. Today. And and what would you say to those guys? But remember, you you know, as you well know from being a pastor, obviously any type of leadership, you have to be able to. To in today's age, you can't hurt feelings. You have to kind of, <laughs> you know, you know how people gonna leave your congregation because you don't hurt their feelings. You told them, hey yeah, man, yeah, yeah, I saw you, I saw you on the corner drinking that forty the other day. <laughs> oh man, what, what the priest doing passing on the corner? But what would you say to him? You know what, I man? It, it's 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 a lot of uh, it's a lot of truth to what you're saying about you know how people receive information now. You know, uh, now I I don't sugarcoat, but I I think I do a pretty good job of communicating truth and facts, but also kind of 
um, giving some dignity to the person. And so honestly, mm-hmm. I thought about so. Oh man, I before the season started, man, I saw the receiver dropping a lot of balls, mm-hmm. and I was like, dude, how many balls are you catching before practice? Like just mm-hmm. just straight up, like you'd be catching a minimum of a hundred balls before practice start, just to mm-hmm. to build it up. So. If I was able to go on that today, I really mm-hmm. want to challenge them. I want them. I want to ask them questions about how serious are they about their craft. Mm-hmm. You know, what kind of player do they want to be? Do, do you just want to shine? Because some dudes just want to shine. You know, they just mm-hmm. want to get a highlight, put it on Instagram. That's what they want, but they don't actually want to be good at what they right. do. They don't want to be great at what they mm-hmm. do. So I would challenge them in what their expectations is and do they really want to be great? Now, and then I'm gonna show them. Mm-hmm. We lose them. They do, and okay. how they work, and how they how they do things. You be like, no, nah, you don't want to, man. You just talking. You mm-hmm. just talking. You know what kind of time are you spending when it comes to film room? You know how much extra are you doing? Are you bugging the third string quarterback to be like, hey man, come out here and throw me these balls, man. You know I need some. Like mm-hmm. like what what are you doing? Because if you're not doing that, it's all lip service. And so that's the that's that's somewhat of my approach to the seriousness. Mm-hmm. And then from that, man, just what kind of what kind of study are they putting in for their opponents? Mm-hmm. You know, do they understand the game? You know, do they understand coverages? You know, like mm-hmm. we knew coverages. We mm-hmm. we knew coverages. We were trained like quarterbacks. You know, mm-hmm. uh, matter of fact, we were so prepared. I'm, I like to get this example about Reggie Wayne. Let me tell you, I mean, Reggie Wayne ain't going to be Hall of Fame for a lot of reasons. But one of the reasons when I say Reggie Wayne was so prepared, Reggie was study to learn cats like parents' names <laughs> and they sisters or their brothers. <clears throat> and he would – and he wouldn't, Reggie, not like a noise talker like you would think. He real slick and subtle with mm-hmm. it. You know, so like you say your mama named Sharon and you got a sister named Kathy. You know, he going to ask about it. He like, hey, man, Kathy mm-hmm. up there, man, she, did she bring a boyfriend? She gonna, <laughs> They up there watching? They, are they watching this? What, what's about to happen? You know, and like, dude, like, how you know my mama name? You know, stuff like that. You know, <laughs> it was <laughs> there was an intentionality about preparation. And mm-hmm. so I think for me, that's my questions for these guys as far as their hunger, their desire uh, mm-hmm. of what that really means to be part of what I'm going to call the fraternity of a cane, but also being a fraternity of being a cane wide receiver, man, that's something I don't take lightly. And I think but, it's a privilege. But Daryl, you had people and Lamar had people to look up to. They were leaders. You mentioned so many wide receivers from the eighties, nineties yeah. or two thousands. Yeah. Who was the leader? Who is somebody to look up to on this team today that they could say, Oh, I've done it. I've made, I did this and I like Harley worked hard. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 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 Over here the one year, but who is there now to tell these kids, I did it. You can do it. There's no leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. That. And that, that's been unfortunate, man. And I don't, I'm hoping something comes back. Like when, when, when we were there, you know, the guys like Lamar and them, and I, I never forget my freshman year was one day we were out there doing one-on-ones and my, Michael Irvin was out there with us, but mm-hmm. it was that culture. There was always the, the canes, coming back, working out with us, training with us, just being around. Um, I know there was a time where that got done away with, like, a few years ago. I'm not going to even blast people. But I was like, you know, I was told, like, I, I, you know, they didn't want me coming back in the weight room. And I'm like, dude, I've been working out down here since 97, since I came in as a freshman. Now I can't come. Like, who, where this come from? You know, and uh, that did something. You know, like, I mm-hmm. I feel like this. When I was still playing, I would come back and work out, and they would make Devin Hester run with me. Mm-hmm. You know, and just that, and I'm sitting here like, man, I can't let this youngster beat me in these drills. But I'm like, this dude's special, though. This dude's special, you know, like, you know, and and and, and to this day, that did something for him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, he see me, That's my point. he see me. And so I, I, I hope we can get back to that. You know, like, hey, man, call Travis Benjamin. Travis, you know, Travis been playing. I mm-hmm. like Travis, too. But Travis need to get in there, cause, you know, because, you know, they may look at me. You know, I'm old now. I don't know. They may yeah. look at me. You know, Lamar, you know, I don't know, but they, we we do need that because that is a difference when it comes to Kane's football. And I would yeah. say anywhere else, man, anywhere else is that that pedigree, but that 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 I'm, I keep calling it that fraternity where it's mm-hmm. like like, like we're, we're, we're these brothers and it's this legacy and we're part of this entire narrative and this story that's continuing on. And there, there's expectations, man. I need, I need you to play. So, you know, I don't know. K.J. Osborne need to get down here. You know, he, mm-hmm. he current, you know. Yeah. Uh, I know he was only here for like a year or whatever, but he, he came. You know, he he played and he worked. So, and he was a hard worker, too. He was a hard worker, yeah. So we, we, we need that. We need that coming back. We need that. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to come down here and work out these cats and charge them up, you know. Uh, because, like I said, we, you know, for us, you know, we we even pre-YouTube. We, we trying to yeah. find stuff on YouTube, no you know, for us to play. But – 
I, I think that's important. I think that's important for them to for them to hear and see. Yeah. But then also yeah. just hear, you know, just keep hearing it because it's just that expectation, yeah. it's that mindset that you have. There used to be a fear of letting you guys down. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that fear exists anymore. Yeah, and Lamar says something too. I'm I'm gonna tell you, it, it was big having our big brothers on the sideline. That was big, man. That was like like to come out the field and see them over there to be like and they cheering for us or fussing at us, whatever one, whatever we needed in the moment. But and it wasn't like you know the attitude of man, y'all oh y'all y'all done with no no. It was like no, nah, we yeah. we this, this is what we do and it's expectation and to see that uh I, man, I, I I don't know why we can't be on the fields the NCAA thing. I don't I don't know, but I think that was important. Uh, uh, when it came to our performance, because it was this understanding of we're, we're part of this legacy that's continuing on. And and remember, I came in '97, fall '97. We went five and six, no mm-hmm. bowl game. You know, it was the last year of probation, all that. We mm-hmm. we don't we didn't have the scholarships, and so you know, just all okay, you know, being straight up, we were trash. Butch went young. We took our <laughs> knocks on the head yeah. with that attitude. We was like, hey, we going we gonna nobody going home for the summer. We gonna work out together. We gonna live together, and we 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 gonna do everything we can to get back to Kane's football. And I think all of that coming together is 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 what needs to be happening. And like and I said at the beginning, I think Mario is is trying to take things in that direction. Uh, it is you know times have changed in a sense, but that that attitude I think is going in that direction. And so uh, you know I want I want to support that. I want to be a part of it however I can. Well, I'm hoping that um, that you can be a part of just like the rest of us. Um, yep. And we definitely appreciate you coming on here tonight, man. And it's always a joy to see you, man. You put no, you put too, a man. smile on my face every time I see you because <laughs> I, I just know that you, you're you going to keep it 100. You're going to tell the truth. And yep. uh, you're yep. going to gonna always say thank you, big brother. You know, like, you know, like I feel like I'm. I, what, I, what I do, man? I don't know what I did. He's like, hey, man, thank you, man. I'm like, all right. Hey, I feel, I feel good every time I walk away from you, man. <laughs> I'm glad about that. Hey, hey, LT, man, it's all love. Like, I and, and I, I when I when I talk like this, and, and Lamar hears a little bit of this, but you know, with, with you guys on, I, I want to shit like when I said earlier, growing up in Dallas, man, and how. Miami was, I never imagined being part of the Miami family. You know what I mean? Like it, it seemed like otherworldly, right? Like mm-hmm. just like that's just that's the top. You know, I'm just trying to get in where I fit in. And and to be part of the Miami family, to be part of the Miami history, man, and legacy. Because like when I was watching, man, I was, you know, Kevin Williams in high school was unstoppable. Mm-hmm. So watching him with Miami and Lamar just bombing cats up, and I'm like, <laughs> Lamar just throw deep balls. Look, look, I don't know if Lamar. Ever in his life was as fast as me. I ain't never been close to bombing cats up like Lamar Thomas. Like Lamar is going. I was like, this joke is the nine king, nine route touchdown. You know, and so and so to be a part of all of that, man, and, and to have a relationship with LT, man, having watched his career, and 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 to be just just a guy, like just Lamar, just a guy, you know, and for me to appreciate that, Lamar ain't never been a prima donna. Uh, you know, some guys be superstars and like you can't get close to them. You know, Lamar is 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 just a guy, and I and I've always I've always had this love for him. Appreciate and even like I said, him challenging us and challenging me to be the best I could be, uh uh went beyond just football, you know what I mean? Just went beyond that. So that's why I'm grateful, man, and, and glad to come on the show, man, and have a good time with you guys. Hey Daryl, before you go, let's not leave the Kane fan out, okay. <laughs> Uh, I want you. I want you to leave us with a little something for the Canes fan, uh, from you know, from the heart of the preacher, and uh, you know, the, the Canes nation is hurting. Yeah, uh, that was a rough Saturday, and it. Yeah. I think everybody felt like they weren't going to have to experience that ever again. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so leave us, leave us with something for the Canes fan, will you? Hey. To, to all the Canes fans, to all the Canes nation, man, I I, I want to say this, and this is a word that's not popular today, but, you know, be patient. Now, I know when I say patient, I don't mean like it's this indefinite period of time, but this is year one for the crystal ball era. There's a lot of things that need to take place. And and like, like the old saying, Roma built in a day, when it comes to culture changes, when it comes to attitude changes, uh, th- th- there's some time there. 
And so I say, hey, stay, stay with, stay with us, uh, stay supportive, uh, uh, keep, 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 keep our canes accountable. You know what I mean? Like, like, don't, don't just be accepting trash. Keep us accountable. They need to hear. You know what I mean? But don't, but don't beat the boys up too. But don't, don't beat them up too bad too. You know what I mean? So, uh, but, but, but continue, man. Hey, hey, this is Kane's Nation, and I do believe the trajectory is heading in the right direction. So I don't lose hope. Now this loss hurt. I, somebody was messing with me Sunday at church, and I said, "Look, I'm gonna tell you right now, we're not where I thought we were gonna be, but I like where we're headed. I like where we're headed, and I think we're headed in the right direction. So uh, uh, don't don't let, keep keep your expectations realistic. You know, have hope, but keep your expectations realistic, and we're going in the right direction. Hey, do you take Jewish guys at your congregation? <laughs> hey, 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 come on, come on. Yes, yes, I got I got a number of Jewish uh, friends, man. Come on, y'all free to visit anytime. Rock Fellowship. You, website rockfellowshipfl.org we do a sunday service at 1 30 so you you can you can sleep in have brunch and then come to service at 1 30 and we have a good time and you're based in what city daryl we're, we're actually in miami lakes we're in miami lakes oh okay Got yeah it. yeah we're in miami lakes at 1 30 yeah so and i and and we'll be out of service before the dolphin game is over too so if you're <laughs> dolphin fans, I, I don't i don't keep you long i don't keep you long <laughs> <laughs> well, they're playing tomorrow night, so this Sunday it won't matter. It won't, yeah. it won't, work. It won't matter. There all Sunday. It won't be no. It won't be That's no watch better. watches. That's won't be no watch. Like, hey, hey, I see them. I know. I know. <laughs> Not the watch watch. Hey, it, the game is strange. Don't even watch watch. They watching on their phone. They looking. I'm like, let me let me go and get. We have a good time, but as soon as service over, I see them, boy. They got the game on the phone. I, hey, what's the score? What's the score? How's it? <laughs> Thank you so much, D, man. Hey, appreciate good, you, man. Love y'all, man. Thank you, man. We'll do it again, man. That was awesome. Buddy. We'll do it right. again. Take care. Hey, go Canes. Daryl Jones, wow. Oof. What an awesome I can see game. why he's what he is, man. Wow. Man, that was incredible. All right, L um, LT, let's do yep. this a little differently tonight because we got a lot yeah. of comments and some yeah. really good ones, and I want to go through some of them. Okay. We'll, we'll skip word association tonight. All right. Um, but take a moment here and um, and tell us about Canesware. All right, let me find my read, man. You, you surprised <laughs> right. me again. Did I, did I surprise you? Yeah, you surprised me again. I got to find my read. Hold on. All right, while look. you're finding that, All right. um, I'll play their commercial. Welcome to Caneswear. Family owned and operated since 2010, Caneswear has all the latest merchandise for the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Inner Miami Soccer, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of I-595, or online at caneswear.com. Caneswear, the spot Miami fan shop. Yeah, LT. I know why you like that place because they got a lot of bald guys working here. <laughs> yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> the ball got heaven over here. That's like Brett. The ball guy. Well, we'll, but... we'll go ahead and we we're gonna let um we're gonna let you go ahead and do your your no no go ahead, do it. You're there. All right, well, okay, all right. It's not about me. All right, all right. Hurricanes football is back. Are you geared up yet? Have you been to Canes wearing Davy recently? Yep. They have the latest gear for the Miami Hurricanes and the Miami Dolphins, too. Caneswear is more than a store. It's an experience. They have the largest selection of Miami Hurricanes items in town. Items from Adidas to Dime Life, Flow Grown, and other brand names, including Team Sideline Apparel, and hundreds of different T-shirts, jerseys, polos, hoodies, and hats and all. Sizes for men, women, kids, babies, and even pets. Caneswear is your tailgating headquarters. Tents, chairs, tables, flags, decals, magnets, license plates, sunglasses, and tattoos. They're definitely, they definitely will get you ready for the game days. So if you want hurricane gear or any South Florida Pro Team merchandise, they've got you covered all season long. So get on over to Caneswear located at 2511 South University Drive in Davie. And of course, they're always open at Canesware.com. Canesware, the spot where Miami fans shop. All right. Yeah. All right, Bruce, before we get back to this, you got anything you want to say about um, you, you know, your special mission these days? Oh, listen, I got about eight calls already this week, and it's only Wednesday. 
um, <laughs> from people who can't see their kids, their fathers who have out of wedlock children. And for whatever the reason, whether the animosity with the girlfriend, they don't see their kids. And under Florida law, that is the law. They don't have to let them see these kids. You're not married to them. So legally, they're not your children, but you have to do something about it. And that's file a paternity action. And you get you serve her. She has to appear. She can't take off with the child. Once she's served, she's subject to the jurisdiction, whether it's Broward, Dade, Palm Beach, whatever. And then you will get your rights and you will see your kids. You will have a schedule. It might be not easy to fight with her because she doesn't want you to have time sharing and overnights. The more overnights you have, the lower your child support is. So there's a correlation. But you will see your kids and you and she will not be able to leave the area, even if she finds a boyfriend, they want to move away. But right now, you have no legal rights to see those kids. And anybody that calls me, I'll give out the number. I will give you a 20% discount. I will take at least $500 to $1,000 off from my Canes friends to do that for you guys because I want to see you have your kids. And many of you know I lost my son. I fight for fathers that want to see their kids. I'm tired of this crap. It's an epidemic in South Florida. 954-258-2525. It's 954-258-2525. It's a really easy number. If you can't find it, Call Gary, put it on Kane Sport, call LT. He knows my number, right? And oh, yeah. I'll do this for you. It's really important for you guys to know your legal rights when you have out of wedlock kids. That's what I want to say. All right, LT. Yeah. James Welford wants to know, and this is interesting, and you're the assistant head coach now of the Orlando franchise of the XFL. So this is a great question for you. Why do you put in a totally new system? You, you know, you, you come into the job um, from Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably have carte blanche. Uh, you know, Mario is going to give you some run game concepts that he wants to see mm -hmm. in the offense. No question about it. Him and Alex Mirabal will have some of their run game concepts that they absolutely want in the playbook. Right. Um, but you have carte blanche to put in your passing game and the whole thing. James Welford wants to know, why do you put in a totally new system when the previous one was very successful for Tyler Van Dyke. Um, why not, you know, keep at least part of that system and gradually change? Now, when people ask me that, I will point out that they did lose five football games last year. So as great as we think maybe that offensive system is or whatever, it may have had its pluses and minuses in fairness. But um, what do you, the assistant head coach of the Orlando franchise of the XFL, say to that question, which I think is a darn good one, Oh, it's a great question, but, you know, Josh Gaddis didn't run that offense. I mean, the only thing he can do is try to run some plays of, of similar, I mean, something similar to what he saw last year, but does he really know why they're running these plays? Everybody has their own system. You know, he has a system that obviously his system was um, uh, the head coach's, what's the Michigan's head coach name? Uh, Jim, Jim Harbaugh's system. You know, obviously that's, because I'm pretty sure they work hand in hand together on calling those plays up in Michigan. So the system that he has, obviously Mario thought that it was, you know, what he wanted, you know, and um, he wasn't thinking about the quarterback because he, he probably wasn't thinking that, Hey man, I got to get something similar to what that guy was successful at. He just was thinking, I got to get the best offensive coordinator that's out there right now. A guy that's been successful, a guy that's won the Broyles Award, uh, all these good positives that come. Michigan going as far as they did last year. Uh, that's the guy I'm going to hire. Not thinking I got to get a guy that 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 maybe studied under Rhett Lashley or coached under Rhett Lashley or retaining the guy that was there or anything like that. He was just thinking I got to get the best assistant. If so, you're a good quarterback, you got to be able to play. You have, in you have to be any in the just. But you also have to. I truly believe from watching this that you got to be able to run some plays that he feels comfortable running. So you got to figure it out. You got to come to some type of happy to adapt too. Yes. You yeah. know, you gotta... in defense of, not defense of Gaddis, but I didn't think Lashley's offense was so great. I remember last year, the Kane Sport posters and myself included were screaming, this running game sucks. He's running up the middle all the time. And, and we were complaining about that. 
I think this year's running backs are playing better than last year's running and, backs. And this run scheme is way better. Yeah, well, I got, so, and, I got, and these kids are really knocking. They're, they're doing really well. Yeah. Eight, nine yards a shot sometimes. We didn't have that last year. It was one yard, one yard, one yard. So I got to admit, I got to admit, I got to admit, Bruce, I was a little salty about last year offense because they threw so many bubble screens and it helped my man break our records. So, uh, I know that. I know I that. Salty. But still, I was, I was if, salty if Dan about Dyke that. was playing better, maybe we wouldn't be screaming yeah. about Gattis because the running is true. Was better. That is true. That is Along true. these lines, LT, mm-hmm. Jason is trying to make the point that Mario Cristobal, he learned from Nick Saban at Alabama, which is certainly part of the coaching education mm-hmm. that Mario went through. Jason says that Saban thing isn't working here at Miami. Mm. Why the heck not? It's still early, Jason. Uh, if, if, if you really thought that this team was going to be in the running, like, again, they got to build some stuff, man. I, I Obviously, we're hurting because they lost to Middle Tennessee State. Now, nobody expected that. Uh, but I was not expecting them to be – I just expected him to improve on last year. That's all I really truly wanted. So him to make an improvement on last year so we can walk away saying to the real people that really cared about us to say, hey, we made some type of improvement. We're getting better. And now you keep bringing in players, you build depth, and you 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 have better competition, better at each position, and you go on and you get better next year. And then two, two three years from now, you're playing for ACC championship or national championship. And who knows? It right. still can happen. Because if well, it still no, happens, Gattis we're going to come do, back. Gattis could do, Jake Garcia could do what Van Dyke did last year after the fourth game and just run the table. That, against that's, the that's if he wins the job. That's if he wins the job. Remember, he wins the job, right. But it's possible, though. Yeah, it's possible. Um, Honey IV says that blocking is 75% attitude and 25% technique. Correct. Is that correct? Uh, I've, I've always said it's about desire. Blocking is desire to me. Guys don't want – there's a lot of guys don't want to do it. And they, you know, they. you watch them in the drills. I mean, I, I to be honest with you, as a receiver coach, I really hate teaching it. <laughs> but I'm like, you got to do it. It's, 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 it's You got to do it, bro. If you don't do it, I can't put you on the field because here's the thing. You might be a great receiver, but I got to take you out when we got to run the ball to your side. Yeah. So like you got to do tight it. ends. Neither one of yeah. them can block that. Well, ball. he's commentating on the tight ends. Yeah. Right. And he's right. saying they're, they're not right. blocking, which they yeah. aren't. And right. he's saying right. that is symptomatic yes. of what is holding this team back well, because it is 75% attitude. Well, they were able to get away with it. Um, you know, and and uh, well, there's, some, there's some anymore. attitudes. There's some attitudes that hopefully I'm, I'm thinking that Mario is trying to change. I mean, remember. Not all these guys are his team. He had to kind of acquire this team. I mean, he right. wanted the job. He got the job. We well, we wanted to give it to him. So we we took on. He took on this team that he's trying to get his guys in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's going to take time, guys. It, it, we still this is my, this is Manny's team. If we win a national championship this year, people are going to say it's Manny's team. <laughs> Yeah. And Manny's going to go. He did it with Butch. When yeah, Carver he's going to go. I mean, he's going to – I mean – You know, I, I said this last night, but I'll repeat it for you, LT, because when I had that book signing with Leon a few weeks ago, he told me that Mario told them straight to his face after spring ball, I'm still teaching these guys how to work. They don't know how to work. You know how to work. He knew how to work. Your teammates knew how to work. These yeah. kids didn't know how to work. So forgetting about the football and the techniques and the schemes, my God, they went in there in the spring like – what do I? What happened here? Well, who were these kids? They didn't know how to work. So he really had to start from scratch. Correct, correct. And I believe that with I a lot of team, with a lot of talentless, not a not a, a talent laden team, they have right. problems. Well, uh, CW is all over me for saying that Mario is the the only person that could resurrect this program. Uh, it's like a lovelorn teenager thinking that she's the only girl in the world for me. All right, let me tell you something. How that, is, guys, that, that is true. She's the only one for you. We know that. Yes, right. But <laughs> but but what I'm saying is, like, everybody is not for everything. You know, and right. maybe, you know, like, Al Golden was great at Temple. That didn't mm. make him right for, for Miami. Right. Um, you know, maybe Mark Richt wasn't right for Miami. Manny right. Diaz maybe wasn't right for, for Miami. Maybe he'll have success as the defensive coordinator at Penn State, where they're undefeated mm-hmm. right now, you know, mm-hmm. and he'll be a whole different coach 
up there at Penn State, maybe, you know, whatever. Listen, I've watched this now for 20 years, mm. okay? And I, and I watched it for the 20 before that. And I saw why it worked for Howard. I saw why it worked for Jimmy. Uh, I saw why it worked for Butch, okay? Um, and I saw why it didn't work for this whole line of mm-hmm. guys that we've had for the last 20 years. Um, Mario Cristobal has the skill set to, to the perfect skill set for this job. And it is going to be a brutal experience for him, okay? Mm -hmm. Because what he's finding is all these South Florida kids that have been getting away with everybody else's head coach are getting away now with him in the head coach's office too. Because these kids don't give five diddlies like about Miami. And a lot of them are leaving. And, you know, and you got to keep the South Florida kids home if you're going to be successful. Um, And, you know, he's seeing how hard it is to change the culture. He just lost... To Middle Tennessee State for the same reasons that Manny Diaz lost to FIU. And, mm. you know, this is not going to be easy. But I'll tell you this, I've never seen anybody work harder. I've never seen anybody walk into that office with a better understanding of what this job is and what it needs to be. I've never seen anybody with the work ethic of Mario Cristobal uh, who, is, <laughs> who is willing to sacrifice his entire life to make this happen. And he's not changing. And he's not losing sight of his mission, and he's not working any less hard, and he's not going to be any less demanding of the people working for him. And if they don't want to come along for his ride, they're not going to be here very long. They're going to be out. Okay. True or false? True or false, you two? In 10 days, we beat North Carolina. These same posters and the ones on Kane's board are going to be saying, we're going to run the table until we get to Clemson. How much you want to bet they start looking past Virginia, Virginia Tech, <laughs> Duke, and ready to go, ready for uh, You know them so well. You know them so well. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. They beat North Carolina. You can forget about what just happened. We're going to be in the ACC title game, and we're going to win the Coastal. That's what's going to happen. But as I said the other day, and Gary agreed, this is the biggest game right now. They have got to beat North Carolina. Yes, how about that? Because you can't be two and three with him as the head coach. It's you not good. Go. Got to go. But, yeah, I mean, I say lose faith in Mario Cristobal at your own peril, man, because none of us are getting younger. And it's been a long 20 years, and you don't want it to be 20 more. And, you you know, you need to have somebody in that office that gives you a fighting chance. And I will go to war with Mario Cristobal any day of the week. Yep. You know, that's the way I feel about it. Especially with his players, especially when he gets who he wants in in that building both on the field and in the staff. Yeah, but but the, uh, I'll tell you, the football community of South Florida is not making it easy for them. Nope. All right. uh, these guys- kids are not just rolling in and saying, I want to be Miami Hurricanes. I mean, uh, I... Well, we, well when, we, when we get the, the, the facility going, right, the, you know, to move all, you know, the kids will go for glitz and glamour. You get the facility, you know, you do all this stuff, and, um, you know, I... I a. Brian just said, Lane Kippen to the U. No. No. We don't want him. No. We don't want that shit show. No. No. I mean, Lane's a good dude, but he, he, he can do that in Mississippi and get away with it. Which it, what does he get, want? How many titles has he won? Yeah, That's they'll get tired of that too. And the guy that, that understands and hopefully gets his guys in there, give him a couple years, we'll be okay. It ain't going to change. Rome is not built overnight. We didn't expect for him to win the AC. If you expected him to win the championship this year, then I don't know what the hell you've been smoking. If you are smoking some, I might need it because I got a medical marijuana car right here. Me too. too. Me uh, too. And, I, and, and so we'll go together. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I, I did think they were going to win the Coastal. I think yeah. Gary said the same thing. There's no excuse. Uh, but now well, it's, a, it's a weak ACC this year. So yes. that's why you probably thought that it's there exactly. was a good chance. But you, again, we overlooked Middle Tennessee State, and that's why I kept saying, "Hey, don't overlook them," you know. And, and but I was not expecting. I thought maybe a tough game, but not what I saw. I think we're going to beat North Carolina. I think well, let's do it. Fired up. I got, I got a bet with Thomas Smith, who played defensive back for the Buffalo Bills, that if, uh, if, if when we win, he has to wear a um, University of Miami sh- uh, jersey or shirt to the next NFL alumni meeting. So okay. All right, guys. Well, great guys. show tonight. Uh, yeah. We covered we covered a lot of ground, man. Yes, we did. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I, and um, a lot of great subjects. And 
those of you that weren't with us from the beginning, I encourage you to watch the podcast. Um, we covered a lot of ground tonight, and there's a lot of interesting subplots and storylines going on with this football program right now. Mm -hmm. And um, we will continue the conversation next Wednesday night. So uh, let's thank Caneswear one more time. It's one more Kane's time. Okay. You're going to do the commercial or not? I okay. can't. No, no, I mean, don't do the commercial. I played it, yeah, play it twice already. Because I got because I got something to say. They got the same hours, no early stuff. Tuesdays and Saturday, 10 to 7. Uh, Sunday and Monday, 11 to 5. And and on uh, the 30th, September the 30th, at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., James Williams will be here at a meet and greet. So Ooh. tickets are available for purchase in store and online. Helmets, footballs, and available are available to purchase. So come on down on September the 30th from 5 to 7 and meet James Williams, number zero, the safety of the Miami Hurricanes. Okay. All right. Um, we'll thank the law office of Christine Rosendahl, Esquire. That's right. Uh, once again, uh, the number has been at the bottom of the screen. If you get into a jam of any type in South Florida, Christine will be on the other end of that phone line to help you out. Uh, so make sure you get with her. We want to thank Mission Barbecue uh, for feeding Lamar. Very important. Uh, very important element of the Lamar Thomas show. Lamar I'm a tight end now. <laughs> you must be well fed. Yeah, but you would block. I would you block. would block. Nobody even would question your man. attitude and effort. That's right. Even um, as a bony man. And we got to thank Daryl Jones. What a great guest that, was that, great. He, that he was tonight. And, uh, you know, gave even gave the Canes fan a little bit at the end of, of his preacher touch to uh, hang in there, that right. things will get better, even though it doesn't seem that way after losing to Middle Tennessee State. And uh, Rick Stock still, yeah, we won't even talk about him. So for, him. so for Bruce, LT, I'm Gary. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll see you next Wednesday night, everybody. Go Canes. Go Canes. Go Canes. Good show.